point, I'm starting to like New Shafe. Okay? New Shafe new is... Shafe's Halloween costume might be better than the original Shafe. Maybe, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a whole lot better about Ryan, a.k.a. New Shafe behind the glass. I, I'm with it. He hit me a couple reggae horns, figured out a, a, a couple drops, and I'm good to go. I, I know. I'm I'm talking about. Don't let us find out that Shafe doesn't do all that much. <laughs> let me. Hey, the 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 aspect of finding out without somebody else, and that person is the person that wants to be a, a civil human being. Talk about it. Talk about like let's 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 do my duties for the county, the city, Middle Tennessee. No 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 no. I don't care about your problems. Okay, I don't care about the issues. I'm sure. He's getting a paid lunch, coffee before he goes to work, and he gets to sleep in. I'm not saying I'm jealous, but I'm a little bit Sounds over. like a fantasy camp to me. That's, that's all I'm saying. Said, hey, hey, and I bet you what he's not going to tell us is he's done by 9 o'clock every day. We're basically a chain gang here, and he's he, doing his thing. Sitting on top of a horse. Indeed. Just watching us do I've work. Got, I've got a pickaxe on the side of the road right now. You know what they gave me? Gravel. They gave me a fork to dig oh, this ditch yeah. with. <laughs> like, it's tough on these streets. D- d- uh, you know what? I'm dropping the J in his name. It's Jonathan. Ooh. He's no. He's no longer worthy. He's just like Jason Kidd. He's got no J. <laughs> he's got Jason Kidd. <laughs> he he better. Going I don't, to Hall of Fame with no jumper. <laughs> with no jumper. Damn shame is what it is. 11-year NFL veteran involved for life from Owen Foster. I'm Jason Martin, Ryan Albany's, a.k.a. Schaefer's Halloween costume. I don't know what names he'll come up with today, but it'll be fun on Zone TV, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook Live, wherever you want to get us, you can get us. You can get us on Twitter at Jmart and Ramon. It is Scout Meeting Wednesday, Scouting the Jags, which basically means we're just going to talk a lot about Urban Meyer today. Oh, I got some hidden gems in my stuff over oh, here, man. well. I have some hidden gems over here, man. Not, not only that, I'm, all their in their media breakdown of him in the media book, they got all like college yeah. perks and just all his accolades. And I'm like, I you mean, know, there's what? nothing else you can point to. <laughs> I'm looking at it like you, you ever seen the white the whiteboard or chalkboard? Guess what? I went up in there and did all of that. Jay wiped it down. Nothing matters because again, that locker room is done with him. Uh, that locker room is is so dumb. Here. And again, I saw Shad Khan's, the owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars statement come up. You know, it it, it almost found, sounds like when you read it that he would love to, but I said this is somebody else. I feel like Urban Meyer is very convincing in a one on one aspect, to where he probably talked to Shad Khan and and just closed the deal like this was. He treated him like a high school prospect the way he talked to him. I feel like. I don't know what's going to come of that letter that was issued out by the Jacksonville Jaguars on behalf of Shaq Khan, but I guarantee you, he talked to him like a um, a five star prospect coming out of the state of Ohio to convince him to hey at least let me finish this thing out. Because I'll say this, he I believe in second chances. Heck, I'm not perfect. I'll tell you the, the uh, I'll tell anybody that up front. But when you're in a position to lead men on a public scale, you can't have these type of things happen. Now, if we're com- we're comparing somebody's personal life to somebody else's, somebody else that had a crazy personal issue come up, Tiger Woods. Yep. Okay? Everybody knew that. Everybody saw the heck. He got his butt beat down, mm-hmm. okay? The thing, the difference between Tiger and Herb, to me, and you let me know if I'm off base a little bit, Urban Meyer has a group that's following him. From college level, that has now on the pro level, he's pretty much the head of that organization aside from the owner. He's leading people. Think about Tiger. Tiger is leading himself, meaning if he messes up, he just got to go. He's a team of one on those golf courses. No, I think that's fair. You, that's an interesting point. Like, you, yeah, you're a leader of men or you're in an individual sport where you, you're playing against yourself and, and all those other things. So really – the harm is more contained, contained in that box. Yes. Weird weird thing I can tell you. This is interesting. I talked to some people who are pretty plugged in the PGA Tour. You know I'm a big golf guy, mm-hmm. especially watching it and following the PGA Tour. And I always got this sense, and I think that it changed. Like, I think he's not this way anymore. But it was always Tiger versus Phil. Yeah. On tour, Tiger's the one everybody liked, and Phil was fake. 
Yeah. Everybody believed Phil was phony. Mm-hmm. That Tiger was the guy that, you know, have a beer with you at the bar, he's the, hang he's out the with you a little bit. Like, yeah, yeah he's going to kill you on the on the course, but he's <laughs> more himself. Right. A little bit more buttoned-down version, but Tiger was who he was. Like, uh-huh. The guy they felt like they knew is the guy they knew, whereas Phil was Shooter McGavin. <laughs> oh. Or um, David Toms from, um, uh, from Ten Cup. Ten Cup. Okay, I never saw Tim. Actually, Cup. Tom's is the wrong name. David Tom's actually a real golfer. David, I um, <laughs> can't remember his last name right now. I, we'll re- we'll find whatever. It. It's yeah. Don Johnson's character in Ten Cup. Yeah. Um, that Phil was a put on. Mm-hmm. He was a show. He would go out there and smile and do the all shucks thing in front of people like he was Eli Manning. Mm-hmm. But behind the scenes, he was not that guy. Not that guy. But I also believe he changed and evolved into being that guy. I'd always heard the same thing about The Rock, too. Like, obviously, I knew what was happening behind the scenes at WWE, and early on, The Rock was a little bit difficult to deal with. David Sims? David Sims. Yeah. Yes. I like that you looked that up. I got to get you right, because you, you can't you miss these. You haven't seen the movie, no, I mean, have you? But you can't miss these answers, okay? We got a standard here at this show. But the Tiger and Urban thing, I, there's a uh, radio host in Cincinnati named Mo Egger, who's he's a pretty talented guy. I've heard yeah. him. He used to fill in for Gold Jr. and stuff in the mornings on ESPN radio, and I'd hear it sometimes on a drive-in. And Mo Egger said yesterday, Urban Meyer is under fire because he's 0-4. And he just left the sentence right there. And what he means is, if he was 3-1, and one, a lot of this we wouldn't be hearing. Well. That it would be far different because people are dunking all over Urban Meyer, basically because he's 0-4. Or it would be slid under the rug. And my partner on Fox Sports Radio, Aaron Torres, then said, yeah, if he was 3-1, and one, people would be talking about how much fun he was having after the win if that video had been put oh, out. Man. And I, I pushed back on that, yeah. and I said, no. He's under fire because he's Urban Meyer and he's 0-4. And, yes. and when I say it that way, I mean, think about what that encompasses about Urban Meyer. It goes to all the past, everything at Ohio State, everything at Florida – his whole culture thing, his connections, all of everything that goes into being Urban Meyer, yeah, and being bad at his job is why he's under fire, yeah, because he has nobody on his side. Mm-hmm. This and 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 to that same point though, too, Jay, as far as nobody being on his side, the, the thing about the optics of of what was going on, aside from you know the the forearm dancing and 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 the pension, is is <laughs> this is this though too. I think you see where his heart is. And 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 I mean that in the sense that he he I, throw the alcohol out, okay? Again, he was having a good time being in the state of Ohio, where he's accepted, where he's a a god, G A W D. I don't want to give him the G O D, not even the lowercase. G A W D. Gold. God. Yeah. Okay. He's that in the state of Ohio. He chose to stay back. Yeah, it may have been because of family reasons, which a coach, Jay, I've, I've been watching athletes all over social media say this. I ain't ever seen this. We heard about college coaches on the recruiting trail possibly doing some stuff like that to close a deal with a kid, but it was probably with another coach. It was sanctioned by somebody above their pay grade, and and what what you saw from him was, man, I'm accepted down here. Again, that 0-4 record probably – doesn't help at all. It it doesn't. And I'll say this too. I, I I feel like this now. You tell me if I'm wrong. Had he been the coach of Ohio State still, I think that video may have been a little bit more protected. But in the NFL, you know this to be a bigger business than anything uh, probably on the college level. They don't care about that. I mean, doesn't this feel like kind of the Deshaun Watson thing in terms of hey, now if – he wasn't trying to get traded and all this kind of stuff. Do you think that the Texans, it's not that the Texans are behind everything. It's that they're not necessarily trying to stop the train Dang once you. it gets out there, which can be just as bad. If you have a PR firm or attorneys or whatever that are keeping things behind closed doors and keeping things hushed, it doesn't necessarily mean you leaked a story or you came up with something untrue. It's just, well, we're not going to put our people behind you to save you in this <laughs> no. situation. If you're winning with us and you're on the field and you're committed to being our guy long term, maybe we'll make sure that the public doesn't actually find out about 95% of this story. That's what I'm getting to, Jay. And and and, and again, for the people like this is the thing. This is a new weekly reset. 
for the Jaguars, scout meeting Wednesday, bang, we're going to knock all of that out. But the whole point about Shad Shai Khan backing him up yesterday, not at least putting him on leave, this is going to be the headline until he's either gone or they put him on leave or he resigns. Like, you cut bait right now because we can end this conversation. You go out and win a game next weekend or the weekend after that, and it's like, whoo, got rid of the, the, the cancer. You know That's what right. I'm saying? Six one five seven three seven one zero four five on the scout meeting Wednesday. Seven three seven one zero four five. When we come back, we'll look at the Jaguars' offense. And we're gonna, look. Urban's going to be kind of the underlying topic. I asked yesterday who would play Urban Meyer in your movie of his adult life. Meaning, I don't care about his childhood and his upbringing and all that. Unless you want to give me like a five minute recap. The movie is the drama that happens pretty much from the second he gets to Gainesville. Even prior to that, like when he's at Bowling Green State and stuff, I'm good on that. You can give me a little five-minute primer. I know he's a good football coach. I'm aware of that. I'm going to see the show. And the show, yeah. unfortunately, is the Benny Hill music underneath. Uh, a lot of incidents and a lot of questionable things yeah. about Urban Meyer. So, 615-737-1045. We come back. We'll jump into scout meeting Wednesday. We'll turn the page on the Jets game, even though you really can't turn the page on that as easily. Nah. And, of course, we'll have Rep. Brian with us later. Brad Crawford, 24-7 Sports. We'll pop in in the next hour. We'll talk SEC football with him. Busy, busy show. It continues next. It's Jay Martin Ramon, 104.5 The Zone. Coming up today on the 3HL. It is a whiny Wednesday on 3HL, but why would that be different than any other day? <laughs> Especially this week. Well, guess what? We're going to visit with Coach Mack, who's going to tell you to keep your powder dry. How about that? He so is. And then I'm going to get with a guy like... Todd Furman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want to oh, try that again? Yeah, I'm going to get with a guy like Todd Furman. And then, guess what? We're going to get some numbers, and it's going to make the week all better for me. That is must-listen to radio, <laughs> if you ask me. If I wasn't on the show, I would listen to that segment. <laughs> you got to. Today, starting at 3 p.m. on 104.5 The Zone. Hey, it's Jay Martin. Next time you're at home, I want you to look around, see if your house is actually trying to tell you something. Doors and windows that seem to be sticking, cracks in your bricks, a bowling basement wall, your drywall separating your concrete's not level. All of these possible foundation issues with your home. Uh, it doesn't sound good because it's not good. It's also something that doesn't go away on its own. So when it comes to foundation repair, nobody does it better than my good pals at United Structural Systems. USS has been serving Middle Tennessee very, very well. Over 25 years in business, integrity and reputation off the charts, including an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau, and they're locally owned. Not a franchise, which means, one, you're helping out a company in your community that's been here for a long time, but also it means they've got a little bit of time to get this job right for you. They'll customize a solution for you and your family based on your needs, your home's needs, They'll give you a detailed free estimate before you have to make a decision. So you've got nothing to lose and a ton to gain with your home. And as always, you don't pay a dime until the work is completely done and you're fully satisfied. How about 20,000 plus satisfied customers will get in the line and tell you, you can feel awesome about placing this call. Call United Structural Systems today, 615-227-2275. That's 227-2275 or visit them online at USSTN.com, and when you get them on the horn, tell them J. Mart of J. Martin Ramon sent you. United Structural Systems. When you need money and the banks have turned you down, Citizen Savings Loan has been lending money to good people with credit problems for over 100 years. At Citizens, it's easy. Apply now at CitizensLoan.com for the money you need.
beneath average. Okay. Uh, their defense is 30th overall in terms of analytics. Yeah. And the offense is 27th. Sheesh. There are 32 teams in the league, Moan. So, <laughs> extrapolating my math, that means they have the fifth worst offense in the league and the second worst defense in the league. Yeah. Third worst defense, I guess. Uh, hard times are real, man. Tots <laughs> and pears. CG will love probably some mashed up tots and some joy pears. and pain, <laughs> sunshine and, and rain. rain. <laughs> pump it up, pump it up. Okay. It's a little rainy today. I actually had no idea it was going to rain over the last 24 hours, dog. Yeah. Well, I mean, you went to West Tennessee yesterday. I got caught in it. How about this? Derailing us on scout meeting for one second. No, go ahead. I get home. Got on a little bit late because the grocery store took forever. Yeah. Get home. Need to relieve the nanny at 2. Okay. We're leaving her at 2.15. All right. My bad. She was good, though. But okay. um, so she leaves. I bring in the groceries. Yeah. Margo needs to be walked. That's very obvious. You said whoop, like get these mitts? Or? She needs to be walked. Oh, because I oh. know she'll come at you, too. No, she needs to be walked. I thought she was going to come She's at you. playing around with the harness. Now it's now it becomes a game. How, how, many, how long do you chase me? <laughs> like I'm the greasy naked guy <laughs> from Family Guy. You better off catching me next year. You'll never catch me. Like she's just running around, won't let me put the harness on her. So I'm like, fine, I'm going to eat. Yeah. And you can chill. Do your thing. So she's sitting next to me. Yeah. CG's been put down in a nap for like five minutes. She hadn't napped all day. Nanny says, you'd probably get a couple of hours maybe this afternoon. <laughs> I'm excited. The rain starts to fall. Yeah. I sit down with the omelet that I've made. Okay. And I'm peeling off a couple of pieces to give to Margo, of course. Give her the first piece. She's excited. <laughs> Drop the second piece. Loud clap of thunder. No. Very loud clap of thunder. First off, CG's two-hour nap ends 10 minutes after I get home, and she doesn't nap again until last night at 9 p.m. No. She doesn't sleep at all. Margo, who will eat shoe leather if you allow her to, <laughs> stops, won't pick up the scrap on the ground anymore, doesn't move, backtracks into her crate with the door open against the back of the crate oh. and lays down and will not get out for three hours. Because she, of the thunder. The thunder? You found her nemesis now? Her kryptonite? She was not feeling it at all. Really? And then a second clap came, and she started to shake inside her crate. Oh. And her, and her ears turned down. Yeah. She was petrified. So, so, so what about the 4th of July? I'm sure there's people popping fireworks in your neighborhood in some capacity. That doesn't bother her? Not that bad. And Thunder really had never gotten her. But these, I think this she was just out there free. Y'all were And all close. of a sudden that hit. Yeah. And it was fairly loud. I had never seen her react that way. But she like the, her door to her crate was open. And she just went in there and wouldn't come out until like five. And that ain't her stilo. No. So are you going to start downloading Thunder sounds? <laughs> That's so petty. But <laughs> hey, it might work. You want some peace and quiet? Abby, turn up the Sonos real quick. <laughs> Might work. I got a Sonos for you if you wanted to. But she was way. not having a good day yesterday, just yeah. like the Jaguars are not having a good season. They will not have a good season. I just looked at the rest of their record. Yeah, the schedule. Yeah, the schedule. Yeah, it's not looking real promising when it comes down to their win loss. But hey, tots and pairs for for uh, Margo, man. Well, I mean, she's okay now, but I know do some a lot of dogs don't like you know thunder and lightning and storms and stuff. Yeah, a lot of times like. If, when there's been a storm, she'll come and jump on the sofa, and you put a blanket on her. She's good to go. And she's, she'll just pass out right there with you for a while. But Here, she was just out and about in the kitchen, and she was just, <laughs> what was that? Mother Nature says, sit your $5 tail down before I make change. Nephew Sally, you have her kryptonite. Download the thunder sounds. Hey. He just said on YouTube. I, I got it on my phone, too. It's to help sleep when the boys were younger. I never got rid of it, but Jay. Hey, turn that TV. Like I said, if you want a Sonos speaker, I got one for you at the uh, crib to turn it up. Well, I'll take a Sonos speaker. All right. Whether I need it for that or not, I'll take a Sonos speaker. 0 oh, 4. <laughs> Titans, Dolphins at Seahawks, Bills at Colts, 49ers, Falcons at Rams, at Titans, Texans at Jets, at Patriots, Colts. That's the rest of the season for the Jags who have started at 0 oh, 4. That's not great. Tell me about the offense, man. The offense, man. I'll give you a little bit of a uh, breakdown. So I'll give you the head coach, OCDC. 
All right, the Jags. Just another guy, okay? Indeed. A uh, head coach, Urban Hangate Meyer, okay? <laughs> Offensive coordinator. <laughs> I've never really heard that before. <laughs> Hangate. Uh, offensive coordinator, which is interesting, though, too, because you spoke about, what was it, Daryl Bevel earlier in the year, too, as far as him being hired. Remember, we were talking about, he was like, I don't know if this is the right guy for this guy, meaning Trevor Lawrence. Um, but he's there and it's proven that is not a good look. Um, defensive coordinator Joe Cullen, not Cully, Joe Cullen. They are 0-4 with some promise is what I have. Well, he looked he looked good. Like Trevor, yeah. they, their offense started to look better against Cincinnati than we had seen. It, it has. Their losses have been, of course, to the Texans, Broncos, Arizona, and Cincinnati on Thursday night football. Offense in general, it is NFL ranking has them 23rd with the run game. They are tied uh, at 23rd, and with the run game, they're tied with 13th uh, as far as yards per game. And their passing game is 27th. So it's not that good for them in the passing game, which is crazy because Trevor Lawrence, is he's got a cannon of an arm that just can't get, I guess, down in distances. They're led by Trevor Lawrence, who's the number one overall draft pick. Uh, he's averaging 4.9 rushes a game. No, their team is averaging 4.9 rush per game. That's actually sixth in the league, actually ahead of the Titans as far as yards per rush. Offense also is minus eight on turnovers. That is one way to lose also, giving the ball up and not getting it back. And they're averaging too real low. We talked about Arizona yesterday. They're averaging, I think, 35 points per game. I think that might be number one in the league. Jacksonville Jaguars are averaging 18.5 points a game. That's 26th in the league. Low scoring for them. Again, starts with the generational talent. Right now, uh, Trevor Lawrence is 57% through the air with 873 yards. He's got five touchdowns, okay? I'm going to say this, and I I, I got to be careful because last week it was two touchdowns and seven interceptions. Trevor Lawrence has got five touchdowns and seven interceptions. There's opportunity there to pick the ball off. Titans, do not let this be a New York situation where this guy has a coming out party against you because we talked about that last week. Both rookies, you're seeing number one and number two in back-to-back weeks. Um, he's been sacked six times. I'll say this, that offensive line is not bad. They got some really good guys. They shopped in free agency a couple years ago, got some guys, got, uh, who is it, um, uh, 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 Cam Robinson, turned his career back over. He's doing solid for them, by the way, also. Um Trevor Lawrence can do almost anything. He can run, throw. He's made defenders uh, miss. And that's one reason he has six sacks, by the way, is that he can he's escape. running. Yeah. Um, also, he's got 82 yards rushing and a touchdown. We saw that touchdown in the Thursday night game against Cincinnati. James Robinson, and Rhett kind of brought this up yesterday. They're starting running back now. He's probably a little ticked off. Should be. Considering they, draft it, they, they drafted uh, Travis Etienne. I, I remember being in that position where he was undrafted guy have a solid year boom draft pick come around yeah but and and at the time we didn't really understand that pick like i like travis Etienne. i do too he's got a good chance to have a nice career in the nfl but robinson you couldn't have asked him to do more than he did for you as a rookie and he looked to me and he's so cheap too like you didn't have to renegotiate his contract or anything right now you could have just drafted a position of need and that was not a position of need that was somebody coming from the college ranks it's like ETN's a stud. We got to go get him. He had his college goggles on, man. Clearly with, like, the draft, the Tim Tebow stuff, like, there's been some moves been made. Like, they could have easily, Jay, used another defender or wide receiver. Because why? Pair Trevor Lawrence with a wide receiver that he can grow up with. You know what I'm saying? Like, there are some vets there, and I'll get to them too. But Travis ETN, I like to – the utility aspect of it, but if 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 um if they didn't get him, who else was gonna pick Travis Etienne? Right. I mean, somebody was. I mean, obviously he was gonna get he taken gonna at get, some point, but I don't think that that was anywhere near a position of need for them. It wasn't. <laughs> I mean, you mentioned a receiver. If you can go receiver, do what the Bengals did, and go get Trevor's guy, Mari Rogers. You feel me? A little bit later on in the draft, at the very least, because they had other picks that they could have done. Like, and you could have gone with an offensive lineman, also. Exactly. So, ET, I'm sure James Robinson, who had a really good year last yeah. year, Pro Bowl, uh, is a little bit ticked off, and he's kind of playing like it too, despite their offense. Um, they spread the handoffs around, though. Right now, uh, James Robinson's got 49 attempts for 230. Urban Meyer's yards. got one attempt. <laughs> he scored a touchdown on that one. Yes, he. 
I don't know what the rest of the night held for him. <laughs> um, but right now, he's got 238 yards on the ground and three touchdowns. He's, a- he's averaging, actually, um, 4.9 yards a carry, which is very efficient. I think it's higher than Derrick Henry right now at this point also, which it doesn't mean a whole lot. Derrick Henry gets a whole lot of touches and get his yards. He's getting 4.9. The thing I said is don't let James Robinson get hot. Also, he's catching the ball. He's got 13 receptions for 90 yards on the ground. Another guy's in the backfield is Carlos Hyde. He's got 19 for uh, 95 he's yards. He's a little long in the twos now. He is. But he's a veteran he's spell a veteran. guy. Exactly. Uh, receivers, LaVisca Chenault. I, I like the name. I like the name. And he's a, he's, a dangerous, he's a dangerous player. He can be, man. Big time. 19 receptions for 194 yards. Got a longer 52 yards. I think we saw that on Thursday Night Football. Marvin Jones, a guy they brought in. He's 20 for 218. Two tubs on the year. Um, and then DJ Chark. Shark? Chark. Who's which, out. Out. Yep. But he's for a while. 22 for. Is he out for the year? Uh, I have to double check on that one. I, I do remember he was out. What was the first game of the year he went down? No, he went down against C- Cincinnati. It was Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Um, on IR, fractured ankle. Not great. But yeah, he went out early in that game. He and AJ, he, a, he and AJ can. So. Both. Uh, again. Herb, go go get a wide receiver. You can never have enough of those guys. We're learning that here right now in Tennessee also. And I said this too. Very solid offensive line that we cap off this offense, man. Andrew Norwell and Big Jeff, the left guard. Right now, there's a, a surplus of really good left guards in this league. Quentin watching uh, Ali Ver, uh, Ver, Vera Tucker last weekend, watching him and Jeff go at it this weekend. Big Jeff's got his hand full, full again. Andrew Noel, very solid. Attitude guy. He's going to meet Jeff with an attitude, and that's going to be a matchup in which you hope Jeff holds his composure because I've watched him for a while, Noel. He loves like he loves the smoke. He, I'm talking about bring it to his front door, man, and that's going to be a really good matchup to watch this, uh, this weekend. As I said again, Cam Robinson has been solid, and also they had one of the highest-paid centers in the league right now in Brandon Linder. I just said he's really good, too. They got a solid OL. Think about this offense with the Jags. They're desperate. This team is desperate. Their head coach is desperate. Um, I, The NFL is probably desperate to get this kind of brushed under the rug a little bit. Do not let this be a, back, a bounce back week for the Jaguars. By the way, James Robinson yeah. against the Titans last year early in the season, mm-hmm. that's when he arrived. He had over 100 yards in the game, 16 carries for 102 Three catches for 18 yards. That ended up being a 33 to 30 game mm-hmm. here in Nashville, and he played well. I think in the in the game down there as well. Yeah, he's been good in, his, a- in his in his games against Tennessee, uh, in particular. And then he kept it going from there. But he scored his first touchdown in that game against the Tennessee Titans on a 17 yard run. He's the, like if he is cooking, yeah. if you let him get off, Said it. you can have trouble with Jacksonville because don't give Trevor Lawrence time yeah. and and comfort because mm-hmm. he can make you pay real fast. You can, and you got to look at him. They got to go through him simply because they're down the wide receiver. Their tight ends, I really couldn't tell you much about. They had a free agent signing in the offseason. He's on IR right now. Also, a bunch of young guys, Trevor Lawrence, and a run game. They got a very solid left side of the offensive line, and the right side is young enough and talented enough to get the job done also. So, pressure them, light them up, don't let the run game get started. But they got some dudes up front that are willing to fight. That's And James Robinson, like you said, I put it in my notes, do not let him get started and get hot. He's running like a madman right now as far as his attitude. 4.9 a carry, very efficient. They just got to keep Trevor Lawrence out of long down and distances and keep him in the pocket. Again, last week we saw with Zach Wilson. If he's on a run and moving in pocket and throwing, secondary, do not break down. It can be anybody's day as far as getting a bomb dropped over him over the top of the defense, and do not let Trevor Lawrence do this type of stuff this week. And again, and you know, we'll do this Friday when we do our keys to the game, you just can't let them stick around. The way that you did with the Jets. Like, you've got to find a way to score touchdowns and not kick three field goals and make it look like they're going to the break and Trevor's able to rally the guys and say, we got this one. We can beat this team. And that's what happened on Sunday is you had Zach Wilson and you had Robert Sala go into that locker room feeling like they could win the game. 
Yep. And you don't want that feeling to exist in the hands of a team that doesn't really know yet what it feels like to win or even to be in a position to. to win. Yeah. How to win. You shut them down. Early. It's a bunch of water around Jacksonville. They got a pool in the top of the stadium. Yep. As B Mac said last week, Brian McFadden. They drown them. They're ready to. I mean, this is it's, it's an emotional week for the coach. I mean, for the players, too. Um, when we come back yesterday, I asked a question who would play Urban Meyer in your version of the movie of his adult life. We'll get you some of the best answers there. Also, the Cowboys say goodbye to Jalen Smith. Easy. Interesting. That's not one I was expecting to see. A monstrous deal last year. Mm -hmm. He kind of set the market up. Something obviously has gone terribly wrong there. So we'll chat about that as well when we come back. 615-737-1045, 737-1045. After the Jets, how do you feel about this team right now as it relates to the Jaguars? Are you concerned about this game? Or do you feel like you're going to beat the brakes off this team because you already got your bad one out of the way for this cycle? There might be one to come later in the year, but you don't see Jets and Jags getting the better of you or even putting up that big of a fight on Sunday. Where are you about this team? How comfortable are you? Are you confident at all in the job to be done this Sunday, knowing the Bills are coming up on Monday Night Football eight days after that and then the Chiefs six days past that? 615-737-1045. It is Jay Martin Ramon here on 104.5 The Zone. Derrick Henry leads the NFL in rushing after four weeks of play. Derrick Henry just went 60. And we know what he's done to Jacksonville in the past five games. At 22 and the Titans do it again. Titans and Jazz, Sunday at high noon on your flagship for Titans radio. 104.5 The Zone. It's J Mart. Are you tired of renting? It's time to make your dream.
Still thought Barry Highs, Jim from American Pie, and his <laughs> dad as Shah Khan was really well played, especially with the gift that he sent. Where it says, well, we'll tell your mother that we just ate it all. <laughs> I am Chinry <laughs> says, Gary Oldman, dude can play anyone. Bobby says, Charlie Sheen. Yeah. Michael DeJesus says, the guy with the headphones and all about Mary, which is just a terrible answer. <laughs> which I think is why he did it. <laughs> Mike Welch makes the Ron Jeremy reference. Oh. Corey agrees, Will Farrell. <laughs> Kyle Scott, Tiny Tom Cruise. Kayfabe Smayfabe just goes with a name that, like, okay, I can see it. Josh Lucas gets mentioned. Don Knotts from Scott, that being Barney Fife from Andy Griffith. I tend to think you were not taking this seriously, Scott. <laughs> I think it's uh, Billy Billy Crudup from The Morning Show. Yeah. is mentioned from Clay Cornwell. Billy Wright says Danny DeVito. Dead ringer. I'm with Danny DeVito. Dead ringer. Zach McMahon, Kyle Chandler from Friday Night Lights. No, we are not going to sully <laughs> Coach Eric Taylor by making him play Coach, Coach o- Urban Meyer. That is that is not a thing uh, <laughs> that's gonna Gilbert Godfrey from Swaggy P Knuckles. I'm with that one. I like the Aflac duck playing Urban Meyer. Jim Carrey from several different people. Jeremy Renner from Toby <laughs> McDonald. I don't think he actually means that either, because I don't know that that's a fit. Johnny Knoxville. Brent Knight says Kevin James. Paul Blart is not Do playing not, Urban Meyer. We're not ruining Kevin James. Even okay. though I can see Urban Meyer as a mall cop. He going to mess around and have to patrol like one soon for a job. He's going to be carrying that walkie-talkie. <laughs> D-Man says Adam Sandler. Um, It is sport, says Jim Carrey, or Jim Neighbors. Like, no, I don't think Gomer Pyle is Urban Meyer. I think that's more Butch Jones. Butch Jones. Brian Gregory says Brian Cranston, you're welcome. He can play anything. I'd rather. If they dust him up. He could actually do it. If he got his hair back, he could do it. Who's the dude that played the Jesus in the Big Lebowski? Uh, Tepturo. I would love to see him play Urban Meyer. <laughs> Just for no reason, not because it works. But yeah, gotcha. Aaron Stevens, Josh Brolin. Jason Lloyd says Kevin Spacey, and I think that's because of Spacey's problems. Oh, no. That's the same reason we've seen the uh, Paul Rubens mentions, the Pee Wee Herman mentions. Yeah. Chris Jeffers says Jason Sudeikis again. We're not sullying Ted Lasso. No, no. With Urban Meyer. <laughs> Charlie Sheen, another one. Peter Dinklage, for some reason, the gets name. some love from BP. The name is why. You know, Peter, no, it, it's not even his name mentioned. It's just a gif of him. You know who Peter Dinklage is? No. It's Tyrion Lannister. <gasps> no. I don't think that one works. Water Cooler know. Talk says the correct answer is Neil Patrick Harris. No, it isn't. Five going to give it to you, says Ben Affleck. Yeah. JC, a couple people said Ryan Reynolds. We saw the Gavin Rossdale thing, and then I realized what that meant. I, I'm I, not going to tell you again who Gavin Rossdale is. I, I will not get off this Peter Dinklage acting. No. It's a must. Bucket says Sloth from the Goonies. Yep. Not even the actor who played Sloth. Sloth is Sloth the role. From the Goonies. And Justin says Sam Rockwell. And that's what yeah. uh, Fake Shafe says, too. That's what Schaefer's Halloween costume says, too. Sam Rockwell could play it. For some reason, when I heard Sam Rockwell, I'm like, I don't think Steve Buscemi would work. Oh, wait, you said Sam Rockwell, not Steve Buscemi. Those are yeah. two different people. Yeah. And Tom Hawk Chop on our YouTube chat right now says Sam Rockwell would kill it, no doubt. Yeah. So we need to take, like, three or four of these, three or four of the best ones, and put them up as a poll question. Yeah. I think Rockwell could be one. Jim Carrey, because I saw it mentioned so many different times, could yeah. be one. What was the original one? McConaughey? McConaughey. Is that you? Yeah, I said McConaughey. So we can put McConaughey in there, and we need a fourth. Peter Dinklage. No. Please. Actually, well, he wins because the polls are all about <laughs> trolling at that point in time. And we should add the Jacksonville Jaguars and let them know, get rid of this because we're going to continue this for weeks. The other one that was crazy is Bill Ingvall. The uh, blue collar comedy guy, because when you see a photo of the two of them next to each other, you could see it. Like yeah, they gave him the I right s- like hair or whatever, like that. Bill Ingvall could actually play her. I'm Meyer. seeing it right now, hundred percent. It's it's kind of wild. I'm I'm definitely seeing it right. Edwin now. Stanley on Facebook says, "Come on, Nicholas Cage, man, he plays everything." That's true. 
Nick, he, Nick Cage would do well with that, I think. John Voight, no. <laughs> Bud Kilmer from Varsity Blues. We're not sullying him as yeah, Urban Meyer. No, Sean William that. Scott. Haven't heard that name mentioned in a while. Uh, Jonas new, Atkins on YouTube says a, that. A guy who's just now getting into the acting world, I think, is doing pretty good, too. James Harrison. You talking about Debo? Yeah. <laughs> Please let Debo do this one. Please let James Harrison. Get I don't this. think that's the fit. <laughs> well, is he the fit for the Jacksonville Jaguars right now? I don't know. No. Shaq Khan, probably a very smart businessman. We know that to be true because he went from a guy in college to a B multi times over. My goodness. To a B billionaire. Make a <sighs> smart business decision soon, man. We're going to have Brad Crawford at 24-7 <laughs> Sports with us in about 25 minutes from right now. We'll talk a lot of SEC football with him. So let's come back. We'll talk a little. We'll do scout meeting. We'll do the defense at 8 a.m. To open the second hour, let's talk about who's real in college football outside of two teams yeah. and what we learned this weekend to set up with our conversation with Brad Crawford. But, again, we're going to put up a poll question of the, the best answers. Maybe Dinklage will be the fourth one, just to see if all of you are the worst <laughs> as to who would play Urban Meyer in the movie about his life. We'll be right back after the top of the hour headlines here on The Zone. Buck Rising knows the value in having his own radio show. There is an interconnectedness to this. It's why radio is still my favorite thing out of all the stuff that I do. And I do too much by far and away. I do too much. But radio is my favorite because... You create these relationships with people. The Buck Rising Show, today from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. on 104.5 The Zone. DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, has a week five offer every football fan should jump on. New customers can bet just $1 on any NFL game and win $100 in free bets if either team scores a point. The last 0-0 tie in the NFL, listen up, it was 1943. So I'd say this is a no-brainer, okay? DraftKings customers can also get skin in the game with new same-game parlays. Combine multiple bets, and we've been seeing these parlays hit time after time after time, but combine multiple bets from the same game for a bigger payout. The more legs you add, like a spider, the more money you can win. Think about DraftKings. It's safe, secure, and reliable. And the best thing about it, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want it. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code WGFX, betting just $1 on any NFL game and win $100 in free bets if either team scores.
breaking news. Not Titan specific, but I know what's coming. We talked about Jalen Smith Mm -hmm. being released yesterday by the Cowboys. Well, how about this one? This from Adam Schefter. Now, Ian Rappaport, I mean, it's, it, this is legit. The Patriots releasing four-time Pro Bowl cornerback Stephon Gilmore, who's yeah. on the pup list but eligible to come back after week six because they could not agree on a restructured contract. He's 31 years old, dealing with a quad injury, supposed to be back in a couple of weeks. Week six. Uh, the expectation... From Schefter, market for Stephon Gilmore, NFL Defensive Player of the Year in 2019, expected to be robust. Multiple teams expected to be interested. 31-year-old Gilmore should be recovered from his quad injury in the coming weeks. Pat's roughly 54000 under the cap. Needed financial flexibility. This move impacts it. Gilmore had a $7 million base salary this yeah. season in what is the final season of his expiring contract. So... Let me just go ahead and throw it out there because I know what's going to happen. This was a guy that was mentioned in the offseason by a lot of fans. Mm -hmm. Go get him. Go try to get him. Your corner situation in your secondary is terrible right now. Yeah. Yeah. I would bet you there are a whole lot of Titans Twitter that's going to be talking about this today. Yep. Wanting this to happen. And him being a Patriot is going to lead even more credence to the idea that they'll want to kick the tires on him yeah. because of where he's coming from. I don't think, I mean, the problem now is you don't have a lot of money. No. Um, right now, looking at the situation for, um, as far as the Titans signing them also, you, you got to also expect maybe he wants an extension this year, mm-hmm. new deal. I'd say he point. does if he's not trying to restructure with the Patriots and yeah. get out of there. Yeah, he's you, you got to be prepared for that also. Or if you get him on a half a year right now mercenary clause and, and get him to sign for whatever to get in the building, but I don't think this is that type of guy that's going to accept that type of deal. I think he's looking for more longevity, resetting the market again. Well, being the uh, 2019 Defensive Player of the Year, He's due a payday, and he played out most of his deal. I think he wanted a deal going into last year after getting that uh, defensive player of the year in 2019. So I'm going to be interested to see who actually puts their hand in the fire and say, hey, come here with us. Of course, you know what everybody's saying right now. I'm already seeing it. Get rid of Jenkins. Pay- Drop Jackrabbit off the side of the road right now and yeah. go make this happen. Cap space the Titans have right now is $9.9 million. That's what they have currently available. So. I'm with you on, I mean, there's going to be people calling over glass to get him right now as far as needing to sign him because he's going to help any team he comes on. Again, I think this was a move that we've seen other players make to get out of teams right now. Hey, I'm not going to cause a whole lot of problems anymore. I'm just going to elect to be injured or get out of this building somehow I can. His was being on the pup, and if if, if uh, he was going against everything that New England has going on right now, it's a reset for him. I'll say this too. He's got to go to a contender is the way I'm looking at it. To go to a team, and he, I don't see him going to Detroit is what I'm saying. What's what, what's Tampa Bay got in money? Tampa Bay in money? I'm, oh, they're 27. They got about $2.1 million. They can still find a way. They can still find a way. Teams with the most cap, Jacksonville, Carolina, which he's an SC guy, University of yeah, South Carolina. Yeah. Uh, Broncos, Eagles, Washington football team, Pittsburgh, Cleveland. Mm. Cleveland's a contender that already has good defensive pieces. Yes. Baltimore is a contender considering they lost Jason Peters earlier this year. That could be in play for him. Ian Marcus Rapp- Peters. Marcus Peters. Ian Rappaport says the Patriots were open to giving Stephon Gilmore a raise but wanted to see him healthy. Instead, he went on the pup list as he recovers from the quad. That tension lasted until they finally released him today. Oh, we. So there was probably an issue there, but yeah. here's another team that probably needs him. This is Kansas City. Mm-hmm. Kansas City has a defense that needs him desperately. They'll find a way to make it happen because they will, and they'll probably push some more, some money towards 2022, 2023 when this new deal fully kicks in and all this new money comes about, new, uh, new cap. Right now, Kansas City has about $2.1 million in cap space. What are you willing to do to get this guy at this point? That's Stephon what it brings down to. Stephon sent out 
a little letter of Pat's Nation. It's with mixed emotions I announce my goodbye to this great fan base. We enjoyed so much success together. You've been an incredible inspiration for my individual achievements. Thank you for supporting this Rock Hill kid, Rock Hill, South Carolina, and allowing him to achieve his NFL dreams. To Mr. Kraft, the coaches, and the organization, thanks for providing me with this platform, allowing me to be part of greatness. Most of all, I want to thank my teammates who lined up next to me every Sunday with one goal in mind. Those moments on and off the field will never be forgotten. Sincerely, Stefan. He mentioned, he mentioned Bill, didn't he? I you mentioned listening. the coaches. Okay, coaches. Mr. Okay. Kraft specifically. The coaches yeah. in the organization giving me a chance. Contenders, if we're being real with money right now. Car- I don't know if Carolina's a contender, but that's home for them. Carolina's got a, got a great defense. Yeah. Their young guy just went down with a foot issue also. I think they're they're definitely on the right track. Carolina's on the pathway up. Yeah. But if you're trying to win right now, of course, he's already won. That's what I was going to say. He's got a ring yeah. and defensive player of the he's year. Not, he doesn't need to chase a ring. He needs right. to find the fit that's proper where he's going to be most comfortable what, what, and all that. What what fit matters the most right now probably for a defensive player of the year that didn't get a raise? How much he can stuff in his pocket yeah, a little course. bit too. The other thing, look, I guess they just ate it. I don't know what Dallas has, but Dallas could use him too. Dallas could. And use Dallas is the glitzy that, kind of place where you could land. And did they're you, a Super Bowl contender right he now. He was playing. Yeah. D- D- Smith was. Mm-hmm. Like he was playing that too. Yeah, he missed a game. He hasn't missed a game. And I'm thinking to myself, it's two players right now in a really good caliber that are out there are free agents. And Dallas is going to continue to pay Smith his tabs the rest of the year. So he has the ability to double dip also. I don't think there's no offset if he signs with somebody else. He's just he can sign for somebody else for a million dollars. Dallas has already guaranteed him the rest of his $7 million contract, I think, this year. Something to myself, like, what was what's going on? Is there a scandal behind him in Dallas? Well, no. What is saying, Hook, he signed a five-year, $64 million extension in 2019. Literally. 35 and a half guaranteed. He had started every game since 2018 through last season, made the Pro Bowl in 19, didn't start any of these first four games. Has 19 tackles this year, played 148 of 264 potential snaps. The difference is they drafted Micah Parsons, and Parsons has been great. So they're like, we'll take the financial hit. It's going to help us in the long run because Micah Parsons right now is pretty cheap. Yeah. So I think that's more it. There might be some kind of a disconnect. Maybe he wants something, or maybe there is some kind of an issue, but a lot of it is Micah Parsons being an early hit yeah. for them making him expendable also, for you, them. And of I course, am, remember he had health issues, like severe true, health very, issues coming out of college. I, 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 I'll I say this too. I know it's a new age, and Michael Parsons seems to be a guy that's, you know what I'm saying, that's built a little bit different. But he came out and said, don't ask me what position I play, like almost boastful that he got the other guy cut. I was yeah. like. Coming in strong. But when Jerry calls him fresh milk, though. <laughs> yeah. So we'll talk a lot about Stephon Gilmore on the show. In third hour, we're going to be wide open. We'll probably take some phone calls on it there. So get yourself set for those. And we'll take your thoughts on the feelings headed into the Jacksonville game. And we'll continue to monitor this story because I'm sure you'll start to see potential suitors pop up throughout the course of this show and throughout the course of the day. When we come back, we'll shift gears a little bit and talk college football. Brad Crawford, 24-7 Sports, has his SEC power rankings out. What did he see from South Carolina as that's who he watches the closest is ACC and South Carolina in particular because he's from around my old stomping grounds in North Carolina. So we'll we'll get a little bit of a primer on what to expect from Shane Beamer's club this weekend and where he sees Heupel's offense and hierarchy of the SEC right now. All that still to come. It's next. Jay Martin Ramon, 104.5 The Zone. This is where the Titans play. Right. 104.5 The Zone. It's Jmart. If your work involves managing a facility, that's any kind of facility, a school building, a shopping mall, a theater, whatever it is, we got good news. Lee Company's offering a special facility evaluation to help you stay open.
perennial Pro Bowl caliber, all pro guy. Defensive player of the year. Obviously, the question we've asked on Twitter, would you sign him? Would you go after him knowing he wants big money long term and try to make it work right now? That's yeah. a poll question at J Martin Ramon, yes or no. And then you can go through the caveat. I saw Dan Graziano of ESPN list. He said, look, there's probably 15 teams that want to do this, but you can look at contenders right now. The 49ers, the Seahawks defense could desperately use him on the back end. Uh, The Cowboys, Green Bay could use him on their back end. Tampa Bay certainly wouldn't mind adding the piece. The Chiefs. Uh, So there's a lot of teams. The Browns, Browns. the Titans. I mean, he didn't mention the Titans, but obviously the Titans would fit as well. So that's the question. Real simple. Yes, no to... Mm-hmm. Going after Stephon Gilmore, he is a, he can sign today at 4 p.m. with a new team. I will bet he is not going to be on the market very long. No, I could see him not. I could see him having a home today. Do you come with a deal, or do you say, "Man, come work, make this work this year"? That's what I mean. Like you have to do some kind of yeah gymnastics cap wise to you make it work. You have to. You have to at this point. And then long term, he wants big time money. And so you have you- to look at that, knowing what you have to do as a football team. And I'm I'm. Speaking of the Titans, but you can speak of anybody. Yeah. Who uh, you have to pay or make decisions on short-term, like next year, who is it that you want to pay over the next few years? Knowing also, though, the salary cap's about to explode mm-hmm. because of the new TV deals and all this. So you're going to have more money to play around with. How comfortable do you feel going for another guy that is dealing with injuries or has dealt with injuries? 31 still got a lot of good football left in him, you would think, unless he has some kind of a degenerative issue. Yeah, Xavier Howard is pretty much going through the same thing right now. and um, He's going through the same thing right now in uh, Miami and, and just cornerbacks trying to get repaid. Uh, as, a, as, a, as far as cap, hip, cap hits go, Stephon Gilmore is the highest right now. Overall total cash being paid out, Tredavion White is getting 18.2. With that being said, Stephon Gilmore was averaging 13. Now, what uh, Stephon Gilmore has over these guys, defensive player of the year, been a part of a Super Bowl defense, uh, still has a lot of good football left. He hasn't played this year, so there's no wear and tear on him right now. I think this was a ploy to get him out of his deal to get him paid even more. I would suggest one thing about this move. If If you were the Titans and you could find a way to make this happen, you're bringing in a dude that's one, and you have a very young secondary, young young group that could use a mentor, yeah. that could use a guy that they would want to follow, that they watched when they were in college, that won at the highest level. Yeah, Who better than a Stephon Gilmore? And I saw, I think it was Mike Herndon, formerly of Broadway, but uh, always a good follow on Twitter, that he said, look, who, who better yeah. to mentor a Caleb Farley? than somebody like Stephon Gilmore. Mm -hmm. And we don't know Stephon Gilmore personally and personality-wise or anything, but we haven't really heard too much negative about him either. No, we have not. He's been quiet and just simply doing his job, man. Um, The highest, I think, overall number as far as salary for a um, DB, Jalen Ramsey. And what what year was this? This was a couple years ago. 2020, he signed a five-year, $100 million deal. Signing bonus of $25 million. And he was guaranteed $71.2 million. I know he's 31 and Jalen's a whole lot younger. Jalen is 26 years old. Just turned 26 years old. Uh, Stefan is going to probably be a shorter contract with similar money averaging out. Uh, the average salary for Jalen is 20. I'm sure uh, Stefan Gilmore averaging his last deal at about $13 million right now as far as per year. He's 25th on that list. So we mentioned the money because you got to be able to take this on. And when you take this on, you need to be a team that can win possibly right now as soon as you can simply because this deal needs to be worth it. And when I mean needs to be worth it, you got to be very much lined up to go chase the chip. Absolutely. So Stephon Gilmore, four-time Pro Bowl cornerback, is now available. He comes off the PUP list week six, coming back from a quad injury, 2019 NFL Player of the Year. We welcome in Brad Crawford, 24-7 Sports. Talk a little college, but Brad, obviously you know a little bit about Stephon Gilmore as well. Um, I don't know if you ever dealt with him or not, but one of the things that we always want to know is, you know, what kind of a teammate 
what kind of a guy is he for all these teams that are looking to kind of bring in a guy like this? There's a former South Carolina Gamecock that really, I don't know that he's been in any kind of trouble or anything. What do you know of Gilmore? No, Stefan's a squeaky clean guy, fellas, and he's sort of a lead by example guy, not not a raw raw guy. He's not exactly a, a loud guy inside the locker room. He just does his job and he, you know, does it damn well. So yeah. um, it'll be really interesting to see where he lands. You know, I've I've seen some tweets this morning about uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers might be a possibility, Kansas City Chiefs. So uh, as you guys mentioned in the previous segment, you know, he has to go to a win now team to make his salary worth it because you know. I mean, cornerbacks are, are solid players. That they can take over their side of the field, but they're they're not going to win you games exactly like a you know a, a quarterback or maybe a premier pass rusher can. Yeah, that's that's going to be interesting coming from. And since you're in South Carolina too, I know they have a whole lot of cap space, and they're in the rebuild. He's got the ring, he's got the accolades. Probably going to end up being a, a a gold jacket type guy. Do you see Carolina being somebody that he could potentially go to? Because why? He's a Rock Hill, South Carolina guy. It's it's home for him. That'd be a very interesting fit. And, you know, J.C. Horn is likely yeah. out for the year, the uh, South Carolina rookie the Panthers drafted, I think, seven overall. So, yeah, that'd, that'd be a great fit if, if the Panthers can, you know, stay under the cap and afford that. Brad, um, we we watched Tennessee against Missouri on Saturday, and we've joked that that's one of the worst defensive performances we've ever witnessed. It cost one guy his job. It could have <laughs> cost the defensive coordinator his job. Heupel's offense exploited them big time. Eli Drinkwitz won. He was one of those guys that coming out of SEC media days, he won the press conference, as they say. He was very likable and affable and out there and fun. So was Shane Beamer. But these are two guys right now that are, I, I don't know what the difference is, but how, how do you, because you're really close to the South Carolina program, where do you feel like South Carolina is as they enter Knoxville on on Saturday? Yeah, I think the Gamecocks are exactly where, you know, most close to the program thought they'd be after five games. I mean, you look at the East Carolina game, that could have easily been a loss. But then you look at the Kentucky loss, that could have easily been a win if, if South Carolina, you know, didn't have such an anemic offense. I think right now the defense under Clayton White is ahead of schedule. It's one of the top-tier defenses in the SEC. And the offense right now, I think, you know, most of us expected the Gamecock rushing attack to be much better than it is. I, I think it's 13th right now with, with LSU uh, being the worst. So um, Gamecocks have talent on offense. It, it really hasn't shown up in the execution department yet. But I think Tennessee's, a, you know, slightly overvalued coming into this game. I, I know the line is 10.5 points, over-unders are around 55. So, I mean, you guys have, have seen the South Carolina-Tennessee rivalry huh. over the last decade plus. It's it's always a single possession game for the most part, and you know it comes down to which team executes better late in the game. One thing I ask you too, since you you know you, you watch these teams in the SEC and just in general, I went back and I thought about something as far as like the fall of of like certain teams: South Carolina, Tennessee, um, just Virginia Tech, a little bit Virginia. And the one thing that's that's common in it is Clemson's kind of invaded the recruiting world of the Carolinas. Georgia has also. Florida has also. With Clemson being out of the top 25, I think, right now at this point, does that reopen up saying, hey, you can come to South Carolina, you can go to a Tennessee now, because there is a whole lot of talent in those two states, and when those other teams, Carolina, Tennessee, and just Virginia Tech were good, they were dipping into those states, man, and taking over recruiting. Yeah, Charlotte and Atlanta have been two uh, hotbeds for South Carolina during the heyday under Steve Spurrier, you know, five- or six-year stretch where they were a top-15 program. I think the, the big thing right now with, with Clemson going down and, you know, some, some other teams in the SEC trying to trying to catch up, it's, you know, South Carolina has to start signing some of these elite players. You know, yeah. through the years, I guess the last five seasons while the Gamecocks have been down, they've had to sign a lot of three-star guys and, and try to develop them. And then some of the four- and five-stars they've landed just haven't panned out yet. So the, the big issue in – in Columbia is is player development. I, I I think they can get to a, a mid to upper tier range in in player development under Shane Beamer. And I mean, you know, it's it's still the the infancy of his tenure. You know, they're they're only five games in right now. He you know hasn't signed his first full class yet. Right. So I think it'll be really interesting to watch over the next two or three seasons to see what you know kind of caliber of player in terms of elite 
you know, prospect Shane Beamer can land. So you put out your power rankings outside of Alabama and Georgia. We all know they're good, and we we saw it displayed about as well as you can display it on Saturday. How else or who else do you believe in in the SEC right now, considering a lot of the other teams that had some kind of hype behind them have underperformed? Yeah, I think there's four really good teams in the SEC right now. You you mentioned the Tide and Bulldogs are sort of in their own tier. And then there's Ole Miss, Arkansas. I'm, I'm not going to dock those two teams for losing the, you know, the best two teams in college football. And then that, that chase for that fifth spot, you know, is, is kind of a toss-up for me between, you know, Texas A&M, unbeaten Kentucky, maybe maybe even Auburn as one of the surprise teams. Kentucky at 5-0, and that, that record – is slightly inflated to me. I mean, I've I've watched almost every snap from Kentucky this season, and they don't strike me as a team that can actually challenge Georgia in the SEC East. You know, the Wildcats might finish second in the division, but you know, there, there's quite a gap right now between Georgia and and that second spot. So, um, Kentucky's game against LSU Saturday night, fellas, that's sort of a barometer test for me. You know, uh, UK coming off that big win over Florida, can they parlay that into a win over a Let's face it, a, a bad LSU team. Um, Ed Ogeron needs to win that game and needs to win several more this season to probably keep his job. So um, I didn't expect to see Coach O teetering huh. on the brink of being fired, you know, in, in mid-October. But, you know, here we are. Yeah, he's, what, 8-7 and seven since uh, since the national championship. So he's barely a 500 coach since that point. And of course, they lost a lot of talent, but – after last year, you were expecting and hoping, at least if you're an LSU fan, to see kind of a bounce back. And now I'm just seeing Ed Ogeron is Gene Chizik 2.0 mm. coming from every single direction right now. It doesn't seem to me like it's going to get any easier. When you look at LSU's schedule, Brad, their next five games are all very losable football games. It's a very tough schedule. And, you know, coming into the year, we thought that, you know, that, that five-game stretch against top 25 teams is probably a – you know, three and two at worst for LSU. Now you're probably looking at probably a one and four. So, I mean, it's a very tough stretch coming up. The the biggest deal for me so far watching LSU football play this year is both sides of the ball in the trenches, man. They just – the Tigers don't scare you. And and when LSU has been good, not only have they had good quarterback play and, and, and some ballers on offense, but, you know, they've had guys get after the, the rusher, you know, at, at – on defense and also been able to run the football. LSU's averaging 2.8 yards per carry this season, which, I mean, that's that's quite shocking. Um, another guy you got to start the side eye a little bit, uh, considering you know all the expectations coming his way on the west side is uh, Jimbo Fisher. This this Texas A and M Texas A and M experiment. It really hasn't done a whole lot for him or them at this point. Well, it's done a lot for him financially. I mean, financially, that ten-year deal he locked in was insane. But between him and Ed Ogeron right now, it's, it's, it's almost like, hey, the lights are turned on, and we, we kind of see you guys for what you are right now. Yeah, you know the the first forty-one games of Kevin Sumlin's tenure in College Station, he was thirty and eleven, and Jimbo Fisher through the first forty-one games is twenty-nine and twelve. And Kevin Sumlin didn't have a great, you know, a, a long leash, but Jimbo Fisher has, what, six more seasons left on a record-setting, like, $80 million deal. Mm -hmm. So um, Texas A&M is, is stuck with who they've got. I think that the problem right now at A&M is, is small, though. I mean, you, you lose your starting quarterback, 80% of college football teams aren't going to play as well the next couple of games. So, you know, they, they've got to get Zach Calzada playing with more confidence at that position. A&M's defense is still really strong, in my opinion. But, I mean, Saturday's game against Alabama, guys, that that was a, you know, matchup that at SEC Media Days everybody thought would be the <laughs> SEC's game of the year. And yeah. it's not even top ten now. The spread is like 20 points. So, um, I think Bama rolls Saturday. And, man, three straight losses coming off a one-loss season for A&M. Um, that, that adds a little pressure to Jimbo Fisher moving forward. You said someone was 30 and 11 and Jimbo was 29 and 12. I'll make sure I get that right before I credit you in a tweet because that, that needs to be stated out loud because it seemed like someone was on the hot seat consistently. Yeah. And I never really understood it because I interviewed him a couple times, Brad. One, I liked him as a guy, but two, I thought he was a pretty good football coach and the expectations for A&M were just way higher than they needed to be on a consistent basis. Sure. Yeah, the the problem with Kevin's teams, you know, wasn't wasn't scoring points and looking sexy on offense. Kevin's always been able to call plays and have really elite quarterback play. You know, had had Manziel there for a while, but the problem was the the defensive front. You know, just 
couldn't stop the run. You know, Kevin Selman, as soon as he got in the SEC, he called it a line of scrimmage league and against, you know, the big boys in the SEC West at the time, Alabama, LSU, and Auburn, you know, he had like a, you know, 30% winning percentage against those big three. And, you know, you're, you're sort of judged on how you do against elite teams when you're an SEC football coach. You can, you can beat up on non-conference teams and, you know, beat the Vandys of the world, but no offense to Vandy, by the way, they're in Nashville. <laughs> I heard the um, drop. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, check the, a hey, check, check those numbers on, on Jimbo and Kevin, but I'm, I'm pretty sure this week when I looked it up, they're about a one game difference through 41 games. So Kevin actually was better, right? Wow. 30 and 11 and 29 and 12. That that's incredible. That is incredible. Absolutely incredible. Brad, always good to catch up with you, brother. Thanks <laughs> yeah. so much, man. Thanks fellas. Yeah, man. That's Brad Crawford. That stat. Wow. I, I'm telling you, man, like we'll, we'll double check it, but I liked someone I did and too. I always thought eight and four was never going to be good enough there for some reason. It's just like, you, you, you made did. a point though. Like these Texas teams and their friggin' their expectations are just preposterous. The dreams they have at night. When's the last time A&M won a national championship? I, I, I'll I, wait. It's been a minute and it's been five minutes. It's been ten. It's been a long um, time. Did they win? They're one a after very us? good. They're a great crowd. They're a great fan base. They're a great univer- Wonderful university. Yes, everything about it. I love A and M. Twelve man, all of that. But easy considering yourself like you're Alabama or Ohio State or Oklahoma or something like that. They didn't go pluck Jimbo from Florida State. Like that you- stat is. I'm really happy he said it. Because I always like trying to defend Kevin Sumlin. Look at my fist right now. I'm, I'm punching the air behind this. 41 games at A&M. <sighs> Kevin Sumlin was 30 and 11. 41 games at A&M. Jimbo's 29 and 12. I said from day one when they hired him, I thought he was overrated. Because since Jameis, what's he actually done? What did he really do at Florida State? He was good. But was he $100 million extend good? Take from old Florida State good? That's crazy, man. Crazy. Stephon Gilmore is out there and available. The Titans are going to want him, I would think. Would you want him? We're going to talk about that. We'll jump into the third hour as well and continue to talk about it. But how about this? If you're the Titans, how do you sell him on you when you think about all the other contenders that are going to want him? That's what we will discuss when we come back. It's J. Martin and Ramon, 104.5 The Zone. Coming up today on Blaine and Mickey. We're in the midst of some huge weeks right now of SEC football. Michael Bratton, SEC.
want around your guys. Stephon Gilmore wants to be paid. He wants big money, just like every other person listening to us right now yeah. and all of us right here. We all uh, want more money than we have right now. Yeah. We might all like to be humble enough to say, you know what, we'll do the job for free. But quite, but the truth so, of the matter is, my butt would be asleep right now if I wasn't getting paid <laughs> to be here. So, <laughs> Stephon, so I'm never going to say, yeah, how dare you go for more money? You go ahead and get what you can get while you can get it. The game's going to chew you up and spit you out. <laughs> get paid every cent that you can get paid. I love coming here. I love doing this show right. with you and Shafe and or fake Shafe. But I would not be here, fellas. I'd hang out with you on your porch or something, but I would not be here for four hours talking to Nashville and everybody on the podcast and wherever you might be listening to us on the 104.5 The Zone app or any number of other places hanging out on Zone TV. Yeah. I would not be doing that if they were not paying me. So, Stephon Gilmore trying to get paid considering he's a 2019 NFL Defensive Player of the Year and a four-time Pro Bowler and all a Super pro. Bowl champion. All pro. Uh, I would be trying to pay him. I would be trying to collect all the money that I can, too. Mm-hmm. He's probably got one more big deal left in him. At 31, he's probably – and the only thing that would stop you from doing anything is if he had some kind of degenerative issue, and I don't think that's the case. The Patriots needed cap relief. They wanted him to restructure. He wasn't willing to do that because he's looking for a new deal. They said, we'll pay you new money and we'll even give you a raise, but we got to see you healthy first. Mm-hmm. And it just kept on going and kept on going, and finally they moved on. So, of course – all the Titans fans out there would like to see him here. Yeah. But there's a whole lot of teams that are contenders that will want him. Buffalo, probably. Oh, yeah. I mean, um, that was his original stopping spot. Right, exactly. Buffalo. Buffalo again. Kansas City, Green Bay, Tampa Bay, Dallas, potentially. They just moved on from somebody yesterday, so they cost them money mm-hmm. in order to do so. The Browns, Baltimore. Yeah. You could see him there. Uh, I mean, really, the Seahawks desperately could use him. The Niners could definitely use him on their back. Everybody could use him because he's better than most of the guys that you've got, no matter who you are, because of where he – I mean, he was – when we were doing the top 50 and all that, Yeah. PFF and Mike Sando and Jeremy Fowler and all his positions, Gilmore's way up on he's that list. way up on that list. Way up there on that list. So here's the question. If you're the Titans – how do you sell Stephon Gilmore on your vision after losing to the Jets on Sunday compared to the other contenders and what they can offer, especially when you just say, hey, come join this defense? How many selling points on that defense do you have yeah. to try and attract a Stephon Gilmore? And this is irrespective of financials and all this, and maybe he just goes where he can make the most money as long as it's a contending team. Yeah. Another team might want to try to pay him as Arizona. Yeah. If they're making a real run and they think their window is now and they might have an MVP quarterback on their hands and Kyler Murray. Yeah. But what do you say to him? Who do you say? You've got Big Jeff that you can point to that you expect to be here long term. You've got Danico now. You've got Bud if he's healthy. You think yeah. you you feel decent about it. You've got Harold Landry. You're stacking is what you're you saying. you got Harold Landry. Yeah. you got Bayard who just needs help. Really I think more than anything. <laughs> And you got young guys like a Farley if he's healthy yeah, in the future, Christian Fulton. Yep. So I don't know if that stacks up against everybody else. But that's what you have to sell them on is the vision, the culture. And I don't know if you can do it. Like maybe he, maybe Shane Bowen's not enough, you know? Maybe there are other teams that can offer more to him in terms of giving him a better chance to win a Super Bowl. Real, real, real question. You know he's already won. Just, just a teaser. Just to, you know what I'm saying? Just to see what y'all think. Do you think John Robinson is on the phone right now talking to his representatives? I feel like he, he at least is going to try for this. And I don't know how you do this. But if it means Jenkins goes today <whistles> or goes in two weeks or whatever, They'll do it. And here's the other thing. Who do you know you have to pay coming up? And who are you willing to basically admit right now, yeah, we're probably not going to pay that guy? I know who the number one guy is. So so let's say this. The guy with the podcast. About Janoris. Janoris signed a, I didn't realize it was a two-year, two-year, $15 million uh, contract with the Titans. He had a $6.4 million signing bonus. This is basically a one that can be spread out because of the cap. 7.5 7.5 is guaranteed on this deal. Next year, I think they're off the books with him um, as far as Janoris goes. 
He's gotten some bonus money. He's got a signing bonus, and he's got a base salary right now, 1.1. Next year, he's free to cut. So, this by what, the way, here it is. This is from uh, Dove Climbing. This just came in. We'll say this before we get to the break, and then we'll – Scout meeting we're still going to do. We're going to keep yeah, talking Gilmore we when we come we have back. To, yeah. Free agent cornerback Stephon Gilmore looking for a deal that will pay him 15 mil a year. That according to Josina Anderson. Not a ton of contending teams have that type of money that they're willing to spend at this point of the season, but if a team wants him, they'll figure out a way. So he's looking for about 15 mil a year. I'll say this respect. That's it? That's what I thought. When I saw that number, I'm like, okay. Maybe that's just to push the number up. Okay, this is okay. I'm selling it for $5. But you get a deal that's fifteen dollars. So he's looking for a deal, a minimum about fifteen mil a year. That, according to Josina Anderson, let me go to her Twitter account real quick, and we'll after the top of the hour, we'll we'll see what we can get together about oh, the information wow. that's collected here this morning, and we'll talk more after the top of the hour. Again, poll question: a couple of them, Urban Meyer acting poll for fun. But now, if you're the Titans, do you do everything you can to make Stephon Gilmore tell you no, yes or no? Considering. That dude might have a home before the end of the day. That's not going to last very long. We'll be right back. Jay Martin Ramon, 104.5 The Zone. The Jacksonville Jaguars have Urban Meyer and Trevor Lawrence. We're not going to throw the flag on that. But they're still Jacksonville. And nobody they bring in can change that. The Titans and Jaguars. Coverage starts Sunday at 9 with Buck Rising on the Lee Company Countdown to Kickoff. On your flagship for Titans Radio, 104.5 The Zone. Hey, it's Ramon. And Nashville is one of the hottest housing markets in America. If you're selling your home and want to know how much you can get for it here in Nashville, check out Open Door. Open Door has invented a whole
but he's not asking for an exorbitant amount of money. Right. His base salary right is seven this year. He's looking for 15-ish. He's looking to be paid like a top corner. Josina Anderson said, look, the Patriots wanted him to play 75 to 80% of the snaps, and they wanted to see him healthy before really giving him a raise. From what she has heard, sources are saying his quad is good. And now he wants to be paid. He wants to be paid like a top corner. There are three guys in the NFL as cornerbacks, as DBs, that have made all three of the last three Pro Bowls. He's one of them. He's one of them. The other two are Jalen Ramsey and Jamal Adams. Wow. Trade market's going to be robust. Every contender's going to want him. Here's Sam Monson because he's a bringer of death. Gilmore's 31 coming off his worst year basically since he entered the league. Number of teams playing as much pure man as the Patriots is smaller by the year. I'm not sure the market for him is going to be the flames people expect it to be. That's not an insignificant gamble. So he's pushing back against it. Then he said, now the flip side to this is I thought Casey Hayward was done and the Raiders picked up a first, first guy all pro basically for nothing. So the upside is massive. And then he mentions Dallas. So all these teams... You can name a contender. All of them are better with him. And Josina has said the Bucks have already inquired. So, here we go. <laughs> so and, of course, he has a tie. And if, if anybody's going to land him and knows how to Pied Piper him, it's Tom Brady. It's Tom. Again, we Ron and I have talked about this a little bit when we did Savage Ready on Friday. Like, let's speak about something. If you get an opportunity to go get some guys, i.e. super teams, i.e. building to win, Tom has started this trend a little bit in a sense. Like, hey. Come join me. We yeah, can do a thing. He's got a little bit. I mean, he watched the the NBA and, model, yes, sir. and he found a way within the NFL's cap structure. Come on now to make it work. We saw this. We saw guys taking less money to go play with Kobe and Shaq. Guys taking less money to go play with Kobe had like Carl Malone chases a ring. Yeah. I always got now it didn't work for some yeah. of them, but they all came there to chase a ring. David West was a massive ring chaser. Yeah. Went everywhere to try to win a ring. Yeah. Ended up winning one in Golden State. Guys taking the veteran minimum to go there. Guys taking below their value to go there. Yeah. And big names. And that's yeah. the other thing that he's been able to do. It's like, hey, A.B., come on. Come on. Gronk, wear your football pants. Ask your mom. <laughs> Ask your, like, go find your football pants. A.B. says screw the $40 million guaranteed if he'd have waited 24 hours in, in Oakland at the time. He walked away from a ton of money. And then he went down there, and they found a way to keep him. Yeah. They kept everybody else, too. And now, they might be the team that lands him. Somebody's going to land that guy within a day. I tweeted out because I guess I just want to choose violence. Because you have to look at this, and now we're, then we're about to get to the phones. Come on, Jay. Who is it that you're willing to say, yeah, we're not going to pay that guy long term? You know who's coming, right? AJ, unless his knees are degenerative to the point where you can't pay him, you have to pay AJ Brown. Nate's going to be coming up. He's going to need money. Yep. Big Jeff is somebody that you're going to have to pay sooner rather than later. We'll see who then wants restructures or who's going to get disgruntled when the salary cap explodes. You have to start looking at a lot of different things. There's one guy I'm on record as saying will not be here next year. You said it. Taylor Lewan. You said it. Why not see if somebody's willing to take him right now? Are you getting that great a play out of your left tackle that you feel like, well, we can't afford to let him go, really? Technically, you do a trade-off. I think Taylor's 31, Stephon Gilmore's 31. Um, I'll say this too, Taylor still have a market. He will have a market. The more tape you get on him right now, the less of a market he's going to have, I'm afraid. he. Do you think you can get a fourth rounder for him? I could see that being the case right now, considering some teams just got bad tackle play right now. I'll say this, Baltimore still without Ronnie Stanley. That could be a situation, but that's also two big salaries you got to take in also at this point. Um, contenders right now, they could use a tackle. Anybody possibly can. I'll say Seattle. You oh, know see, what I'm Seattle is a team that they should do everything they can to get him. You pair him with Jamal Adams. <laughs> that back end is garbage. Wow. So people are telling me, yeah, the offensive line's already trash. You're going to get Tannehill murdered, and you're punting on the season without Lawan. I'm like, First off, how healthy do you expect him to be for the rest of the year? Second off, how well is he playing? Yeah. How much worse can it be? Yeah. Whew. This is an interesting situation here now, man. 
I mean, you need corners, you need offensive line. There's yeah. there's several needs for this team. But again, everybody's entitled to their opinion. I threw that out there because I think it's something worth mentioning. Now, to the phones. Josh in Columbia. Josh, what's up? What's up, Josh? Hey, hey good morning, guys. Um, just talking about Gilmore and stuff. I mean, it, if you can get him, I John Robinson would be a fool not to make the call. Yeah. At least try. Um, I mean, obviously, Jack, not Jackrabbit, pardon me, Janoris, because he's lost the rights to call Jackrabbit. Correct. Rabbit. Um, he has <laughs> not played to what we're paying him and what we need him to play to. Um, Bolton's been playing lights out. Obviously, last week wasn't his best game, but you know, you pair him and Gilmore up, I, it's a really it's a different se- uh, secondary. Um, as far as what we need to do to get him, uh, hopefully John Hunts can talk some magic. Um, Brable can talk some magic. Uh, you know, we, we have a great, or not a great, but a, a solid defense front mm-hmm. um, that's doing their job uh, for the most part. In what we're hurting in is is the backfield or behind them. Yeah. Um, so if they can talk him into being like, hey, you're the last piece we need for this defense to really take the next step, uh, you know, it, it wouldn't hurt. Um, I don't know if trading Lawan right now will benefit us at all because uh, despite his lack of play, he's still one of our better offensive linemen right now, and I just feel like it hurt. Now, next season, as much as it pains me to say, I'm kind of with you. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be on the team. Right. So, but uh, I'll hang up and I'll listen to y'all. All right. I, I don't think he's on the team next year. I know a lot of people. I even saw Elijah Haynes say, sounds sacrilegious to trade Lawan. Dude, eventually everybody gets got. Business. Eventually, look, he was great for a long time of this team. I think a lot of that is in the past. And I don't think John Robinson wants him back. Yeah. Just a personal opinion. Let's go to Cousin Andrew in Portland next. What's Andrew, up, Andrew? Andrew. Hey, what's going on, fellas? I'm so glad I followed that guy because um, it plays right into what I'm about to say. So <clears throat> he said Taylor Lewan is our best offensive lineman. Um, and he's not wrong. And I'm going to put it to you like this. Yeah, Gilmore is a shiny toy at Walmart. But if you're going to Walmart to go to the grocery store and your best apple at home is rotten, then don't go buy a shiny toy, especially if you're on a budget. I don't know this Titans team's budget, but we've got defensive backs, corners, sitting on the bench because they're hurt. Yeah. So that plays a big factor in it. Um, I think our bigger need is offensive line. If you're going to address something immediately in season, I think you need to address offensive linemen. And I know they're not just floating around out there, you know, saying, hey, pick me, pick me. Yeah, if you can get Gilmore, get him, because we're struggling in the secondary as well. But it's like buying that shiny toy at the store when you really need to feed your kids at at home. So um, that's, that's kind of the way I see it. Like I said, I'd love to have him, but I'm more looking at the offensive line as our bigger problem. Um, so that's what I got, guys. Yeah. Okay, so I agree with that point, but I will say this. There's not an offensive line that's a three-time pro bowler that's sitting out there that you can get right now. The thing about it is what just came available doesn't usually come available. This guy coming available five weeks into the NFL season, you're looking at the offensive line for next year. We've had this discussion off air as a show, and even we've brought Red in. We talked to different people. The offensive line next year, this is going to look a lot like Pittsburgh, I think. <laughs> in terms of, and I we haven't mentioned this analogy, but it came to me. They redid their entire offensive line, basically. Yeah, Alejandro's out. Pouncey retires. You're one year removed from them. They got released. Being gone. Yeah, DeCastro's no longer there. They reset their offensive line. It hadn't been great for them, but they also have a quarterback problem. Yeah. They have some other issues. Yeah. I think Taylor's not here. I think Saffold is cl- probably close to the end of his career. He just can't stay healthy, and he's played for a long time, and he's played a lot of snaps. I don't necessarily think he's back. Ben Jones seems to get hurt in every football game he plays in now. Toughest guy I know, it seems like. I mean, he keeps coming back. He keeps showing up. But he gets banged up every week. And then there's Nate. And Nate hasn't played great, and he's not playing great to try and be an anchor, certainly, because there's not anybody else out there that you really like. Raidens is a second rounder that they've got to get ready to play Mm -hmm. or admit that they really bombed out on that pick. So you're going to have to see him soon 
you would think. I feel like you're going to be looking at an entirely new offensive line next year, okay? Mm-hmm. Do you think you can win the Super Bowl this year as a fan? Look at this. You know what I predicted. But now I'm looking at it, I'm saying, do you think you can win a Super Bowl this year? Do you think Taylor Lewan is part of your future after this season? That's why I'm saying you make the move. I don't think the offensive line could be much worse than it is right now. The caliber of offensive linemen that you could get is nowhere in the same universe as a Stephon Gilmore coming available today. Right now. And like, so it's like, yeah, I'd love to have him long term, but long term might be what you need to look for here because this team might have holes that you believe are going to preclude you from being able to win a Super Bowl or compete for one this year anyway. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's more we definitely got to get into with this situation. Um, Jay, very valid point. Again, it's going to be a different team. And we had somebody call yesterday talking about this window, 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 window. Like, with at the rate that the Titans have played right now and dropping games are not supposed to, players getting older, you got to start stacking pieces at some point in time, Jay. Eric says, is there not an option of moving the one to right tackle next season? I don't think so. That option, I mean, there's an option, but I don't think they're going to pay him. He's been a left all his life, though, too. I just think they're. I think that marriage is coming to an end. I see Robert. I see Michael. I see Derek. I see Cozo Mike all on the line. We have to get to a break, but when we come back, we will roll through more of your phone calls. What do you think about Gilmore coming available? Um, if you're a Titans fan, how would you try to make this happen? Would you try to make this happen? What would you do? How do you feel about the team? All of these are valid questions. Yeah. We'll be right back, and we will take your phone calls. Jay Martin, Ramon, 104.5 The Zone. The NFC West starts your NFL weekend as the Rams are at the Seahawks. Coverage starts tomorrow at 7 on your home for Thursday night football. 104.5 The Zone. Mortgage interest rates are still sitting at an all-time low level, but they are starting to tick up. So if you've been sitting on the fence to get a refi or if you haven't gotten your pre-approved home loan locked in, now is the time. you got to quit waiting for a lower rate because they won't stick around for much longer. Interest rates are sitting in a low 2% right now.
find a trade partner knowing that he wanted big money and they wanted to see him healthy before they paid him that big money. Uh, all indicators, Justine Anderson saying he's healthy or he's going to be his quads in good shape. This is interesting from Ari Mayrov at my sports update. It says, reminder, Bill Belichick moving on for players right before or during a season has happened many times before. And he gives a list. 2003, Lawyer Malloy. Yeah. 2006, Dion Branch. 2009, Richard Seymour, who ended up going to the Raiders. 2010, Randy Moss. 2014, Logan Mankins. 2016, Jamie Collins. 2017, Jimmy G. And now Stephon Gilmore. Bill don't mess around. You also mention uh, Chandler Jones. Chandler Jones, Cam Newton. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Chandler Jones one. That was that was a big time. Yeah, I'm surprised line. that one's not the, not in the list. I'm shocked behind that one. PFF says which contender should add Stephon Gilmore to its secondary based on odds to win the Super Bowl. Buccaneers are plus five hundred. Chiefs plus six hundred. Packers plus twelve hundred. Cowboys plus two thousand. Those are the only four that are mentioned. Say those again. Who are they? Bucks, Chiefs, Packers, Cowboys. I actually look at Dallas and think yeah, I could see Dallas. I could see that. I could see Dallas. Um, Josina also saying this. My understanding yesterday evening and this morning have been emotional for Stephon Gilmore. Not only will he be changing teams, moving family, kids changing school, his original intent was to find a resolution in New England that also credited his worth even now as they were were releasing him. Ooh, so he wanted this to work, and they just couldn't make it work. They couldn't make it work. And I don't blame him, so I wouldn't get out there, too, if I knew that, you know, they, they wanted to see me. Like, no, nah, I'm not going to devalue myself. To me, I'll say he this. He was standing up for the for what he felt like he was worth. Yeah. To get the contract because he had never really gotten that money yet. And they still pretty much owe him money already. And last year of it, he won an extension. So this is going to be kind of iffy moving forward, man. Rob I think I'll say this, too. 15 is just the floor. Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Robert and Madison. Robert, what's up? What's up, Rob? Good morning, bless your bless everybody. Uh, listen, if you if you guys don't mind, keep me on the phone, keep me on hold, or however you do it, because sure. I'm on my phone listening to you. Yeah. Uh, what I wanted to do is talk about uh, a trade, and I know it might not happen, but this is a scenario I'm gonna use. Uh, finding a partner in, in Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, nothing's wrong with Tanner here. Don't get it twisted. But right. let's get Jalen Hurst, and and. Zach Ertz in a trade for Ryan Tannehill and uh, Taylor Lewan. On top of the fact that if if we have an offensive line problems, there's your answer in terms of a mobile quarterback. Not that not that Tannehill's not, but he's a heck of a lot more mobile. On top of the fact that you're saving a lot of money and you can take that money and the cap space that you gain from it and go out to uh, a Gilmore today. And leave me, leave me on, and what do you guys okay. think about that? Okay, not going to happen. Um, I love Jalen Hurts, man. Nobody I would like to root for more, but there's no way you're you're moving on from Tannehill. Yeah, not right now. Tannehill been, hasn't warranted that. He's been really that. good, and Jalen Hurts is a very – it's still a pretty big question mark as to whether or not he's going to be the long-term answer for Philadelphia. Yeah. They're always flirting with somebody else again. These, these trade scenarios, like that's – that's NBA level type of, of trade moving on. And and not to say that it's not possible because it absolutely is. I, I just don't think you want to remove a guy like that. Oh, me either. I think it's I think it's almost disrespectful you, to mention Tannehill and Jalen Hurts in the same sense. I'll just say right this now. too, considering you lost your OC last year, got a new OC right now. It'll be a totally different system for Jalen Hurts to come in. Okay, I, I think that one uh was a robber. I think that's way too many movement parts for a team that's trying to compete right now. Now for the future, if something was to happen in the offseason, let's say if somebody had had had, had missed their game into and you needed somebody to help you win right now to get you over the hump, I'm okay with something like that. But I don't think that's this is a, a crisis type of, of of moment to kind of have those type of trades and scenarios, especially for a a starting franchise quarterback. That's the reason I think that one wouldn't work. Michael in Clarksville is next. Michael, go right ahead. What's up, Michael? Hey, guys. What's going on? I appreciate y'all taking my call. Yes, I called yesterday uh, and complained about all those plays being uh, predictable. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my, my, my thing here is, and I want to start out by saying I would hate to get rid of Taylor Lamont because I think, well, one, he's one of my favorite guys on the team. But from a business standpoint and a future standpoint for the team, I could understand doing it. What would you guys say to – 
trading Taylor Lewan in the offseason for a fourth, maybe even a third round pick if there was a team out there that was um, desperate enough to get need somebody on the offensive line, get rid of Bud Dupree, get us three to four picks uh, for the first four rounds, nothing but offensive linemen. Now, I understand that getting that many offensive linemen at once is not going to be a win-now scenario, but you, if you bring all those guys in together and have them play together from beginning to, to, to grooming them to where they need to be, in two to three years, this could be a hell of an offensive line where everybody's already meshing together instead of bringing in one guy every year to replace some guy every year that's not doing the job that he's supposed to be doing. And by getting rid of Taylor Lewan and Brad Dupree, I mean, that's going to free up probably 30 to $40 million next year. And then you can always fix that secondary or bring in, you know, a veteran for the offensive line if that's what you're looking for. So, Michael. Um, Appreciate the call. I, I'm not surprised that we're already hearing the move on from Bud Dupree stuff. Mm-hmm. I would back off on that for a little while. I don't think he should have played yet. I think that was a mistake by the coaching yeah. staff to let him play those first couple of games. I think that has set him back. He's coming back from the same injury everybody wants to excuse Taylor Lewan from. Oh, don't you know what you I'm saying? dare go down that road. Because it's like, well, Taylor's coming back from ACL. He's going to be fine. Uh, what's the difference? Except that Bud is younger and in recent years has proven more. Yeah. Like, Bud, if he hadn't played yet, would you be trying to move on from him if you were just trying to make sure he was healthy week six going on or week five or whatever like that? Um, in terms of the rest of it, I like I said, I know Lawan has a lot of love in this city, and he's done a lot of great stuff in the community. And he's been cool to have around and everything else, but eventually what's what's the play going to get you? Yeah. And a lot of this other stuff and saving money here and there and all, you got to – I don't think they're going to move on from Bud that fast anyway. Not that quick. I just think they've mishandled it completely. I, I'm trying to see how much uh, – A lot of people still, by the way, defending Lawan on the chat, saying he's one of the vocal leaders. Lawan's one of the vocal leaders. What happens to the chemistry? I'm like, is he a vocal leader now? Seems like to me he's going after fans and he's talking about himself a lot. Yeah. But that's for that's forgivable, I guess. Um, and then trading and moving around a whole bunch of offensive line. We're seeing a team right now, honestly, in Miami that has that going on. They got a brand new group of offensive linemen. Yes, they're young, and truth be told, if you go out and get new guys coming into the offensive line, it's gonna be young. I'll say this too, it's gonna be young and a whole lot of in, uh, uh inexperience also. A team that I can see getting Luan, maybe accepting a trade. We talked about it on break, Jay. I said, Pittsburgh could be a team. Yes. Just going to throw that out there. They can be a spot. Why? Because they got two young guys coming up into contract years, Tuxacor 4 and Zach Banner also. They're trying to rebuild their protection. Tell Luan seems like, to me, I could be wrong. He seems like he wants out, doesn't he? That last press, if y'all go look for it, it's almost like he was fed up. Like, man, I'm. you can hear it sometimes in people's voices. Like, they'll say what they don't want to say underneath their voice a little bit. If you're trying to get them off the books in the offseason, that's going to be one of the things that happens. Elijah, uh, I got to cut you off. Go ahead. Elijah Haynes is defending Luan left to right. Say, you can't get rid of him, blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. And then he said, what about Landry for Gilmore? So you want to get rid of the best defensive player right now on the team? The guy that's that, – did I, you see that stat that I put out? Mm-hmm. I didn't put out the stat, but I retweeted the stat. Yeah. About most quarterback pressures this season. Harold Landry's leading. Also, but over Miles Garrett. Yeah. And I can't remember was the it other TJ? one. No, it was Miles and um who was it? I'll Jay? have to go back and look it up now. Oh, uh, Bosa. Bosa. He has more than both of them. He's been great this year. Mm-hmm. Also, getting rid of Bud, this is also contract notes. The pre-2021, this year, and 2022 salaries are both fully guaranteed. So you can't get rid of him right now. Elijah says secondary needs to help, Jake. Well, what are the linebackers without Harold Landry? Yeah, the linebacker position is going to be something that's got to be high. Sean Evans probably about. not going to be here next year. Doesn't seem like You got it. Wesley asking about uh, Jay, huh? David Long just had a bad game when he was called into more action than usual. Not that I don't think David Long can play. He just had a bad week. Hey. But Rashawn Evans didn't live up last year. Hadn't started out great this year. I don't think that you're in good shape linebacker long term. 
Like I, and Landry's the Landry's the guy you got to pay. Yeah. Landry's the one guy that's right now proving you got to pay him. This this team's in a very volatile situation right now. If we throw this out there, Landry's a guy. Do you want to let all your hometown guys go? That's the one thing I've been saying for a while. Why are all your hometown grown? drafted guys out of this building off this team what is the actual culture of a bunch of outsiders that's the biggest thing is now you're trying to get rid of another guy go let's go to ali in nashville what's up ali what's up ali what's up boys how are y'all good man hey all right uh i'm gonna go on a little tantrum as much as i love taylor the one uh i've he's been he's been phenomenal the past how many ever years that he's been here but bro we all get it. You're coming off an ACL injury, coming in and attacking the fans. That's a no-no for me. Like, yo, just shut up and be an offensive lineman. Play the next game. Don't care about what the fans think about you, and be the last, best left tackle in the NFL. Like, just care less about this. So that's why I feel like, uh, uh, back to uh, J. Mark's point earlier. Um, yeah, Taylor or J. John Robinson might be fed up with Taylor one. And it would be even more hilarious if Tyler Vrabel gets drafted to replace him next year. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> also would love to see Coach T's reaction to a uh, pit stop in the Berg or bussing with the Berg. I just don't know if Tomlin would be down with the podcast. The one thing I do know is that crowd was going to hold you accountable. Same way they dogged Juju for his antics. AB got dogged for his. Uh, Eric Ebron got dogged for his. Like, you're going to be held accountable. Ali, don't just say shut up and be an offensive lineman. Come on, man. I know what you mean, but hey, offensive lines, uh, lives matter too. Come on, Ali. You better than that. Andrew in Clarksville. Andrew, what's up? Hey, guys. I'm, I'm enjoying the show. And I'll make it quick. I know that we're going into week six of the season, but I just wanted your thoughts on uh, how much did a lack of playing preseason games affect where we are now in terms of being able to, to have some sense of uh, how Tannehill can know where people are on the field, people's bodies being antiquated to, to a new season, things of that nature, and how, that, how a lack of probably playing preseason games may have uh, attributed to some of the things that we're witnessing now. Yeah. I think it's a fair question to ask, and Very I think fair. that it had to affect it. It had to. There's no question. AJ said they had plenty of practice time. I, I respectfully disagree, but now you've got health issues and everything else, but trying to build chemistry with, with new pieces, they didn't have a whole lot of work together. But you, you said this, and we said this about this team this year. This schedule wasn't going to allow them Correct. to come out of they the gate slow. Yeah, they couldn't have a ramp-up period because no. you had Arizona and Seattle – no. And the Colts, who at the time you thought were going to be healthier when you faced exactly. off with them. There was no room for getting it out the gates. And, I, and and we're going to get to your calls. I promise you this, too. And it's also this, too. And Jay brings up this point. And, and I thought this about the Titans and just any other team, too. When you have a veteran team and the Titans have a whole lot of guys that's played a whole lot of reps, too, in this league. I thought the lack of playing time during the preseason, hey, they're vets. They're going to make it happen. But then you bring up the Tom Brady situation. He's out there every single day. He might have some low management. He may have some, you know, practices off, but he's out there every single day playing preseason games and everything. As far as this management aspect of it, the team that I play for kind of went through that a little bit too as far as sitting guys and then what happens? Come out hot, then you have a lull. There's a lot that I'm, I'm thinking in a sense, if you're not right-minded or you think it's just going to happen for you, this ain't the league for that no more. Right. Right now, even the bottom teams are competing at a very high rate. Right. Except for Jacksonville. I mean, look at what the Jets did last weekend. You have no room for coming out five too slow out of the blocks, okay? You better be fire hot because there is this window, the ability to compete in this league. Everybody is pressing you. What happened with New Orleans right now? They come out fire high against a Green Bay. Poof, be gone. You're no longer hot. You better have your, man, all the movement that's got to happen around this team shouldn't be a discussion. I'll say this. This team has enough talent, worth all, consistency to where it should be pumping at the brakes. We shouldn't be having this conversation about going to get another guy because you trust your GM to go get these guys in the offseason. It, right now, it's, 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 it's truly a management of just play ball and make it happen for this team. The hopes and dreams of going to get somebody in this offseason or right now during the season, do what you have to, but you better get right or there are going to be picket, pickets outside with signs and people saying, hey, do better. 
So we got JT. Oh, I mean to I go see, on that ramp. See, Tony's on the line. Because of Mike, we got to have ramp up music for him. So those are the three calls that we will get to to finish off the third hour of the show. I apologize, Mike. We're going to get to you here, but I promise we yes. will get to all three of them. We're going to bump birthdays yet again because news has taken precedence. We got Rep. Brian coming in for pretty much the entire fourth hour. Gilmore is going to be a topic. Certainly the Jets. It's Scout Meeting Wednesday, and we can kind of have to turn that into Scout Meeting Thursday a little bit because yeah. this news is too big, and you guys want to talk about it. So we will take those phone calls, Herbs continue to line them it. up. We'll take them when Rhett's on as well. 615-737-1045. Ryan Albany is ready to take your phone call. We'll be right back. It's Jay Mart and Ramon, 104.5 The Zone. Live interaction with other listeners while watching your favorite Zone shows. It's 104.5 The Zone TV Live on YouTube and Twitch. I don't know if you know this or not, but if you didn't know, I'm a car guy. And when I say that, I'm a Ford guy too, okay? Only trucks I've ever had, Ford. Okay, I've had the Ford Explorer. Um, I have a, another Ford vehicle at the house. That's just how I roll. I like the brand. The brand is good. And if you're a Ford person like me, you can ask anybody in town, who's the go-to Ford dealer? And they're going to tell you Two Rivers Ford. And it's so many reasons why they're the go-to, okay? Number one, they're local. You know them. They've been here for a while. They've been in this area for over 40 years, and that says a lot about the way a car dealership does business and the way they treat their customers. They also have non-commissioned salespeople. And what does that mean for you? It means you you don't have to walk into the dealership and feel like you're going to be met with a handshake that's very slimy. No, no, no. Their people get paid no matter what, and that is the best part about it. Whether you buy that car or not, there's going to be a low-pressure situation for you at Two Rivers Four. It's very low stress at Two Rivers Four. And let's talk about the work trucks. If you have a business in this area, Two Rivers has an entire commercial fleet department that is top-rated in the southeast. So many of the work trucks and SUVs that you see on the road, guess where they come from? Two Rivers Ford, okay? Whether it's the plumbers, caterers, landscape, to real estate agents, they're from Two Rivers Ford. They know time is money, so they make buying a work truck fast, easy, and affordable. That's why they dominate this space, okay? You really need to check them out if you have a business. And if you're looking for a Ford, listen to me. Go see my friends at Two Rivers Ford and get the best car buying experience out there. They're in Mountain Julia, about seven miles past the airport, BNA, or online at tworiversford.com. And you can always call them at 1-800-900-1000. Mickey Ryan here to tell you about Rent Estate, the new revenue rocket ship, putting your home up for rent, not for sale. But why would you do that in a seller's market? Just do the math.
Pro Bowl now. He's a three-time, uh, four-time Pro Bowler. He's been in the last three. Only two other guys, defensive backs, had been there, Jamal Adams and Jalen Ramsey. And those two guys I think you'd want on the Titans roster if they were available. Hell yeah. And I think you feel the same way about <laughs> Stephon Gilmore. I'm just throwing Got it out of, there. Got out of character right there, Red. <laughs> just throwing it out there. I feel like if Jamal Adams and uh, Jalen Ramsey were available right now, you'd probably take those guys. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Straight up, man. Miss me with that. <laughs> Miss me with all that. JT in Nashville. JT, what's, what's going up, on? JT. Good morning. Nash, how are you? Good. 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 Good morning. What is this? Wake up Wednesday, row one, call into the zone and talk out of your neck. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Let them know, JT. <laughs> man, could you imagine going going into the facility talking about we traded you and Taylor to the Eagles for Jalen Hurts? <laughs> I just have a Good. feeling Robert was guy, an Alabama you're, fan. Your blind, your blind side tackles going with you. <laughs> Unbelievable. I know, man. You guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Robert just, wanted. He called in just to correct that, huh? Robert, Robert, who was very, very kind in his call and said, bless you guys off the start, then said, can you trade Ryan Tannehill to the Eagles? And get Jalen Hurts and Zach Ertz and also move Taylor the one. I'm just I'm just sitting here. I'm the uh, the gif of the Spanish soap opera woman with the math equations all around her. <laughs> yeah. Listen to that guy. No, I don't think so. I don't think that's what we're going to – Tony the Stud's on the line. What's going on, what's Tony? What's up, Tony? Hey, what's going on, y'all? Hey. hey um, <clears throat> I just wanted to say um, that trade with Philadelphia was probably one of the most ridiculous trades that, that would ever go down. First off, the offensive line for the Titans need to do their job. We don't need to – and and I like this Stephon Gilmore. I love I love this guy. He's, you know, he was 2019 Defensive Player of the Year. Totally worth it coming off his quad injury. He's probably going to be fine. Mm -hmm. But the Titans already have so much money invested in players that are sitting on the sideline right now with injuries. You know, like the Darrington Evans, who's just getting ready to come back. Mm -hmm. A.J. Brown's on the sideline right now. Julio Jones is on the sideline. Your left tackle, your your all-star left tackle has been hurt all year long. But there's so much money tied into the injuries that we have already that if I was if I was the Titans GM, if I was Amy, if I was Mike, I, I'm talking about how to get what we have healthy so that we can have these pieces to be better. Because right now the pieces that we put together are not collectively on the field together. You're getting bits and pieces of it. Um, and I just feel like even it, you know, if you get, go and get rid of somebody to pick up Gilmore, what's to say that Gilmore is not going to, you know, you know, have a couple of weeks or have a mishap and, and be out? I, I think the Titans need to just do their jobs better right now. Uh, you can do the R E L A X thing all day long, but if you're not doing your job, you're not doing your job. And right now, I think that offensive line isn't doing their job because the Jets were number ten defense coming in. Taylor Lewan did not give up seven sacks. That offensive line gave up seven sacks. No, no, and, I corrected that the other day. O line okay. was responsible for five. The first two five, actually okay. given to the uh, given to to a running back, and the next one was given to a, a okay. running back and a quarterback well, who was releasing in the flats. Lamont, he was hot. Think of this too. But what about but what about Ryan? Did, I've never seen this out of him before. But didn't his pocket presence look a little bit off? Like he kind of was. Was he slow getting the ball out just for that game? I felt like I can't uh, listen. Wait a second, Tony. I can't listen to that because the problem here's the problem, man. You just said AJ and Julio aren't playing, right? Mm -hmm. You got receivers right. that have no separation down the field. If you go watch the All Twenty Two tape, you're seeing Akina and you're seeing these guys. And, and look, they made plays, but Reynolds and those guys they couldn't separate. Well, they couldn't separate at all from enough. the secondary. So Tannehill had nowhere to go with the ball. He was stuck in the tackle box on numerous times where he wasn't going to be able to escape to throw the ball out of bounds. I feel like people that came at Tannehill were coming at him wrong this week because I thought he was one of the bright spots on the team on Sunday. Yeah. I, I can carry on that. I'm, I'm with you. I, I fully agree with you on that one. I'm, I'm all about saying, hey, protect, you know what I'm saying, put blame on who's supposed to get it. But um, O-line had their issues. But this is also the case, too, which is why Stephon Gilmore is attracted to a place like Nashville. Rush, meaning the front four, and coverage work together. If you got a heck of a rush up front, guess what the back end of the defense is doing? It's relaxing. It's, it's just being able to play the game the way they need to play because the defender's going to get there. This past weekend, rushing coverage worked well, very well for the New York Jets. 
But we knew that, though. Red and I, we all talked about this this past weekend. They got some guys up front. We named them. We told you about them. Their defense is ranked 10th overall. And the thing that we had to really come to terms with, Robert Salah, Robert Salah, he's a defensive-minded guy for a reason. Right. He's got some studs over there on that side of the ball, or at least he's getting them. I didn't know who Quincy Williams was. I know who he I is now. I knew who Quentin Williams was. I knew who Quentin. You definitely know Quincy Williams now. I big time know Quincy. There are a few Quincy's I know. Come on. I know Quincy's, the old buffet restaurant, ha. because of the big fat yeast roll. Talk about it. I know Quincy AC, the former Baylor star. Okay. Basketball. I know Quincy Jones. <laughs> hey. And his daughter Rashida. Never forget about him. And I know Quincy Williams. Yes, sir. Because of Sunday. Again. C.J. Mosley, Sheldon Rankins is on that. John Franklin Myers also had a day for the Jets. Mike, I lied to you, man. We just ran out of time in the segment. Rhett would love to hear from you. Yeah, me. we're you're gonna you're gonna be with us while Rhett is also here. Okay, I'm sorry, brother. We just we got to get to the break. But after the top of the hour headlines, Rhett Bryan of Titans Radio will be with us. Obviously, Stephon Gilmore is going to derail some of our conversation on Scout Meeting Wednesday. We'll look back a little bit to the Jets, but. Look ahead to the Jaguars, the Urban Meyer situation. Always a good time with Rhett. And we will lead off, Mike. I will have uh, Schaefer's Halloween costume play your walk-up music. I promise you. Stick with us. We'll get to you first when we come back here. Jay Martin Ramon, 104.5 The Zone. Coming up today on the 3HL. It is a whiny Wednesday on 3HL, but why would that be different than any other day? <laughs> Especially this week. Well, guess what? We're going to visit with Coach Mack, who's going to tell you to keep your powder dry. How about that? He so sure is. And then I'm going to get with a guy like Todd Furman. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. You want to you oh, try that again? Yeah, I'm going to get with a guy like Todd Furman. And then, guess what? We're going to get some numbers, and it's going to make the week all better for me. That is must-listen-to radio, <laughs> if you ask me. <laughs> if I wasn't on the show, I would listen to that segment. <laughs> you got to. Today, starting at 3 p.m. on 104.5 The Zone. This is former assignment with the CBS Sports Minute. Sponsored by AutoZone, get in the zone, AutoZone. A few quarterbacks put up better numbers, but Kyler Murray played damn near perfect against the Rams and has the Cardinals as the lone undefeated team standing. That merits my first game ball. In the Kansas City-Philadelphia puntless track meet, Tyree Kill earned the gold medal with 11 receptions for 186 yards and three touchdowns. I rarely do this, but I'm giving game balls to the entire Buffalo defense. They pitched their second shutout in a month, never giving an inch to Houston rookie Davis Mills and his offense.
There it is. So potato salad. Better have some good potato salad <laughs> game, right? And some ribs. But I found out he was vegan. He can't even bring us ribs. Mm. So Come on, Ryan, what are we doing? <coughs> hey, let me tell you something about the barbecue too. And Talk this is going to be a difference of opinion by some folks. Talk to me. If I if I bring ribs to your barbecue, I ain't bringing no baby backs. I'm bringing <laughs> pork country style, so big boys. Big boy spares. More meat than bone. Oh. Weapons. I'll talk about it, Rock Red. followed by roll. Don't Let's trim go. your bones only, down. Only nothing. soup bones I want are Undertaker's forearms in the corner. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> soup bones. And I ain't got nothing against baby back ribs. That's no hate on that. Yeah. But I'm bringing spare country style pork ribs. That is. So, Stephon Gilmore is out Which there. That's the story. Patriots letting him go. Yeah, speaking of a big rib. Yeah. Good Lord. <laughs> Giant that, rib that out was, there. One was, rib. You know, Jalen Smith with the Cowboys yesterday, that was something. Yeah. This is a whole nother subject. Patriots said, hold my beer. Well, they have $54,000 under the cap. They couldn't come to any kind of an agreement with whatever. They need a relief. They had to re- get relief, and they, they're getting five point what eight million dollars I think, in relief. And so let me tell you this. To those that say the salary cap is a myth, I present you them having to release Stephon Gilmore today and not being able to come to an agreement on a player they loved. Whoever says the salary cap is a myth has not watched the National Football League oh, since 1993. Insane. Three, yeah. Nine, when it was yeah, implemented. You can, you can finagle it and you can do things. You can push money down the road a little bit. Eventually it comes due. Yeah. And part I think part of the reason why people say that it is a myth is because it has grown exponentially right. every year over year with these new television contracts. But the one thing they didn't think about, and no one did, is a pandemic caused the first retraction, if you will, in the first 25-plus years of the whole thing yeah. happening. And that's the only thing that slowed this money train down. And we know it's going to go back up next year. But, that's- you know, the jockeying for position – uh, is where um, where we are. And the ones who have been perennially average to bad that had lots of rollover took advantage of the market this year, yeah, went, they retracted on the other teams who have been competitive, a la, uh, you know, getting Tom Brady, the Buccaneers reloading basically all 22 plus. Yeah. And they had that rollover money in this thing. So that's kind of what has set up the stage for this stuff. So setting up the stage for Stefan Gilmore, Rhett, 15 is what he said his number is. He's got to average out to that. What is the real number, you think, right? What, what contenders being in? Well, he's never been available before. So, yeah, I mean, exactly. and, and 31 or not and coming off of a hamstring or not or whatever, uh, you know, I, it wouldn't surprise me to see it north of that figure. That might be the baseline figure. Or it may be, uh, you know, one year prove it and – and he tries yeah. to dip back into the market in 2022 when it explodes. Yeah. You know, that's always a possibility. 15 for this year makes sense. Heck, I mean, you subtract, what, six games? 15 million for the rest of the year? Yeah, you yeah. deal with that. Pro rata, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a hell of a player. That much we know. We talked to Brad Crawford in the second hour of the show, who's very close with South Carolina, and he point blank said, Stephon Gilmore's a class act, never had any kind of real issues, squeaky clean, exactly the kind of guy you'd want to mentor, Caleb Farley, a Fulton, some of those guys. Mm -hmm. A dude that's won a Super Bowl with the IT organization of the century in pro sports, not even even just in football, in pro sports across the board. He's been a part of the dynasty. The Patriots have been the dynasty. Mm -hmm. He was on what, Moan? They're a 2010s all-decade team. That's That's a team you'd want to be on. You're on the all-decade team of the Patriots. We're not talking about you're on the all-decade team of the Jaguars. Mm-hmm. You're on the all-decade. <laughs> you're on the all-decade team of the Detroit Lions. Oh my! That's They're putting you on the all-decade team of the Patriots. You're 31, coming off of three consecutive Pro Bowls. It's not even a Julio situation where he missed like a good portion of last season, and there were some question marks about yeah. how committed he was and all this. No, he's got a quad that they're saying is fine. And he's out there for money that doesn't seem exorbitant. Mm-hmm. I understand why two thirds of the league are making phone calls right now. Diane Rossini saying a ton of people are interested. The Bucks have already reached out, according to Josina Anderson. Well, and to underline what you're saying, because mm-hmm. we started off this conversation with the salary cap and those things. Uh-huh. He's one of the few people that stayed in New England and got paid. Yep. That tells you what kind of career he's had. Uh huh. Because they don't do that with everybody not named Tom Brady. Thomas, absolutely not, man. Um, but but Rhett, we we've had 
conversation. We talked all the way around this thing. From your perspective covering this team, knowing John Robinson the last five, six years when he's been here to, for the fan base sake, for the sake of this team this year, we talk about windows opening and closing, all this type of thing. Has he picked up the phone you think this morning at least inquired about? Uh, I would think so. I would think the number of teams that have called to inquire about his services, regardless of the Titans, is yeah. way up there. Yeah. Because the guy's never been available on the market. But, yeah, I'm sure he's inquired. Yeah. And, and that now, would be the – I don't ahead. know where the money is because, uh, you know, you'd have to do something with the money because the cap situation is not right for them for this if you're talking about 15, depending on how the deal is structured. Because what I see looks like they're just a little under $10 million under the – yeah, yeah so, that's that's what I saw I too. Mean, and you've got to have transaction money. You know, you've got fourteen guys on IR already. Look, he may look. He so I don't think he ends up here. I think there's just too many other potential suitors that maybe are in better positions, whether financially or otherwise, mm-hmm. to get him. But I do think you do whatever math you need to do today to at least put yourself in the ball game. I think you need to find out what it would cost you, what you can get done, what that's on your roster right now could be finagled around to make this thing work, you at least kick serious tires on this, Mm -hmm. even if you don't end up landing it. I mean, you're coming off a loss to the Jets, right? Yep. You're coming off a loss to the Jets, and you just mentioned one of the longest injury lists in the league fourth belongs in the NFL to the Tennessee right Titans now. right now. 14 players on IR, fourth in the NFL, and that's not including any of the current injuries that are non-IR that are – the, the, well, and the thing is, and the thing that's terrible about it, and you you would know this better than anybody, Ramon, is it's soft tissue injuries. Yeah. The most frustrating kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It's not a, a bone that you can see heal on mm-hmm. an X-ray and go, okay, broken legs done, let's go. It's you gonna, know, it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a moving target. It, it really is. And the thing about those soft tissue injuries is it takes time. You cannot rush it. And you just better hope that the guys you have behind those guys with those injuries are are capable of of getting the job done, too. It's ready when it's ready. When it's ready. <laughs> and that sucks to say. And the thing about these injury lists and this IR list for the Titans, right? We're only in the week five. Yep. We're not talking about cold weather injuries as far as just guys getting hurt here, hit. And, I mean, and look, longevity of the and, season. And the thing that's the bad taste in the mouth of Titans fans and certainly the organization is, you know, everybody wanted to look at this, like, well, we can go up there and smoke them and keep moving. We've talked about how good their defense is, yeah. how good they are on third down, in the red zone, those things. And you you were able to not do your own things, keep them in that ball game, give oxygen to their fire. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you're going into overtime trying to figure out how to win this thing. So, and you, you did all the things that you yeah. you know we cautioned against last week. You allowed explosive plays on defense. You were ineffective in the red zone at first, especially in the first three trips. Uh, the protection of the quarterback with seven quarterback sacks, and then ninety-eight yards worth of penalties, costly ones. Four, one of them was a forty-three-yard DPI. Uh, so you know, you just, you know, you, and you, here you are with another team. I don't care what's going on with Urban Meyer. Put that to the side. You've got a Jaguars team that has got a little oxygen. It's in its system. Because they could, they nearly beat the Bengals on the road and got an AFC win. That's right. When we come back, we'll, we'll look more into it. You can call in if you got questions for the roundtable here. You can at 615-737-1045. 737-1045. As we go to break, Jacob Prophet gets our top observation for the entire morning. On YouTube says, for the record, just tried that Philly trade on Madden. It was denied. <laughs> <laughs> no chance. That being the one Robert called about suggesting uh, Tannehill for Jalen Hurts and Zach morning. Ertz and Lawan and Woo boy. Titans fans. Mm-hmm. Love them. Yep. Be right back. Jay Martin Ramon, 1045 the zone. Friday night, it's Independence at Summit in the 1045 the Zone Game of the Week. Presented by the Tennessee Highway Safety Office and Paul Winkler Investing. Coverage starts Friday night at 630 with Will Bowling and Lucas Panzica on your home for high school football. 1045 The Zone. Guys, listen up. Have you been struggling with ED? Well, there's great news for you. There's finally a treatment for ED that does not require pills, injections, or surgery. It is a medical breakthrough. Hillside Medical Clinic provides the most advanced form of acoustic wave therapy designed to improve blood flow and reverse ED. Also helps restore natural performance in the bedroom. 
This form of treatment has been studied extensively and proven to be extremely effective in the treatment of ED for all ages. Now, if you
belief the Patriots might still put off or pull off a trade for Gilmore before his release officially hits the transaction wire. Stay tuned. Wow. So the advantage to that would be if you go trade for him, then you're not necessarily competing with all the other teams in the league. If you because New England would presumably get a draft pick back and then you would get the guy as opposed to him being able to pick his destination. Is that what I'm what I'm hearing or what I'm thinking? I think that's part of it. I mean, you, you know, um, that you'd be able to jump cut the line, but you first of all, you gotta have the the draft capital to pull it off. Mm-hmm. And then if you're given multiple picks, you're gonna have to have a sign and trade kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I, you know, look, if there's anybody who can pull that kind of stuff off, the Patriots are notorious for collecting third round picks by the way they work the, you know, the uh, compensatory picks and all that kind of stuff. But I still, you know, you're at the 11th hour, basically. It's, it's saying so. that his base salary for this year, because he got a sign-up bonus of 3.6, they restructured and gave him a 4.9, I guess, at some point, and his base salary is 1.555. So mm. you can get him for low, but it's definitely going to be a, I need a pay increase, like, yesterday. Mm-hmm. So you deal with it how you want to. I don't think the Patriots are going to be able to pull this off. I think they they've showed their hand already. Too. Yeah, it's just the, it's the eleventh hour. I mean, he's really already is. put out a statement saying goodbye, saying goodbye to the yeah. fans. A very classy statement as well. The one yeah. that was done uh, appropriately, unlike the Julio one. Remember when he got out and said he was out on the TV network? Ah, it's just me throwing a little shade right there. Okay. <laughs> but uh, but uh, <laughs> but Ray, I'm just listening to you speak. I know um, you brought up something, man. I'm gonna knock out the defensive side real quick. Scout it's, team it's, Wednesday. It's Here Scott we go. Team Wednesday. It's not a whole lot, but it's still interesting. Okay. okay. This because to your point about that team last week in the Jets and how they won and what they did to get the job. Like it, it might be a bunch of names you're not familiar with, mm-hmm. but they're still guys that got a whole lot of that P word and that's potential. Mm-hmm. Okay. This defense ranks 30th in yards giving up a game. Okay, not cute, of course, okay? But they're giving up 106 uh, rushing yards per game. They actually push them 13th, middle of the road, ain't bad. This is the part right here that's very interesting, depending on how long they can hold up. They're giving up 3.46 per rush. That's fifth. The Titans, who I think have a very good rush defense, I've said at times, like, there's one thing that's good is the Titans being able to stop the ball. The Titans are ninth. So as far as being able to stop the run as of right now, because they hadn't seen Derrick Henry, okay, and he's their kryptonite. But they're doing very well against the rush right now. They're 40% on third down, which puts them in the middle of the road at 16th in this league. They only got five sacks on the season. I'm hesitant to say that type of stuff again because I said this about the Jets last weekend, right. okay? <clears throat> they, well, you don't want them to get hot this week, right? No, you don't. And look, I'm going to say immediately – they're with the offensive line issues, health and everything else. I'm not saying that the Jags wouldn't get some quarterback sacks out of this with what's going on with that. But what I am going to say is this front of the Jags is not nearly as formidable as what you saw with the Jets. Mm-hmm. Cause I mean, you know, they have number one in the red zone, top five and third down the whole deal. Now, do they have pieces and parts to make this thing work absolutely mm-hmm. now josh allen the other josh allen the kentucky draft pick from 2019 gonna get to, yeah. he is he's he has not played like 2019 josh allen who right. was a game wrecker mm-hmm. and then they got kayla von chase on a year ago mm-hmm. from lsu who still isn't comfortable he hasn't found his niche yet and, and and that was the knock on him coming out is the athleticism off the charts kind of like the kid but, at arizona from Clemson. Yes. Uh, goodness. Isaiah Simmons. Simmons, 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 yeah. yes. So, and it's the same kind of scenario. Caleb Von Chason was used so much all over that mm-hmm. Coach O defense at LSU, he never had a chance to settle in at a certain position to see how well his athleticism translated to his skill set and those things. So that's one of the reasons why he hadn't really kind of popped yet. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, you know, they just traded their away their best corner in CJ Henderson yeah. to the Carolina Panthers, who yeah. needed a corner after um, JC Horn went JC. down. Yep. So they're, but you pointed out the most important thing: they're better against the run yeah. than they have been in recent years. Now, this is where irresistible force for, versus the immovable object. You know, equation comes in because Derrick Henry 
in his last five games, 740 yards, 7.1 per carry, nice. nine touchdowns. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the formula in all this. That's both you've racing. Got, you've got to go get the big guy, and he's averaging 32 touches a game on the ground. you got to get him and just work the horse. Work. The, other, the, other work formula, him. the other formula is you just got to get touchdowns and not field goals early. Bingo. To try and separate take a game the score. Out. Yes. Separate the score. And because here's the other thing you saw Zach Wilson get life mm -hmm. and get hot. Yep. You dang sure can't do that this week because Trevor yeah. Lawrence is a better quarterback. Yeah, he is. That big, tall drink of water. Do you see what he did last yeah. Thursday night? He rolled out of that pocket and flicked that ball 48 yards to yep. LaVisca Chenault and set up a, uh, you know, a, a first and goal situation. Yep. That dude is going to be a problem in this division, and I would like to see that deferred down the road to another week. <laughs> so, to, to finish up their defense, Miles Jack, solid, been their mm -hmm. steady guy for years. Their man. tackling machine. They That's have right. a leader. And and the reason I'm only bringing it, because it, 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 it correlates to the Jets. Jets had C.J. Mosley. Jags got uh, Miles Jack, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, also another veteran on this defensive line, Malcolm Brown, a former Patriots guy. That's right. I put this in my notes as a little joke. Probably lost our respect for Herb. He's a former patron. He ain't used to this type of Herb BS, okay? Let's go throw that out there. He's looking at Herb like I'm the captain now. All right. Uh, another thing, too, that's, that's helping their run is uh, Devon Hamilton. Big body guy, 6'4", 320, can create fits. Also, with Ben Jones helped a little bit here and there, mm -hmm. You want I put him on my notes. You want this guy off the field. Todd Downing has to get them in sets to where it's more subsets to where he's off the field. He's a nose tackle. He's probably not going to be in on sub packages. Get him off the field because he's the one clogging up the run game for those guys right there, okay? And your same point. I said this about this team. Got three former first-rounders trying to get on the field and make it happen for them. Josh Allen, seventh overall out of Kentucky. Yep. Taven Bryant out of Florida, who's a backup right now for the most part. Big body guy. Right. Motor guy to be as big as he is, too. And then uh, who's a uh, Caleb Von Chason right. out of LSU, who's a 20 pick. Very young, good core. To your point about burying them when you got the opportunity, you better do it now because once these guys decide to grow up like Isaiah Simmons did in Arizona, it could create fits for the AFC South. Also signed Shaquille Griffin in the offseason. He's been iffy, okay, for the most part of the season. But he's a guy that can make plays back in that secondary. Yes, he is. And also the other guy that I got to bring up because Jay tweeted out that picture yesterday. This guy's the legend. Shaquille Quarterman is the linebacker that was staring at Urban over his shoulder. Oh, that was, it was him. It was him that was it doing was, it. It was Shaquille. Shaq Quarterman. Shaq Quarterman. <laughs> Flower. Is who it was, man, and uh, he is not for the games because Herb got him on special teams, and he's like, again, he's everybody about Herb. It. I'm the captain now. <laughs> but this team, you don't a... want them rallying, though. It's, it's the other part okay, of it. Okay, now let me let me bring up one other thing, and you've you've outlined the defense well there, so we know what the challenges are. Got to keep the wolves away from the door to keep 17 upright because he took a beating last week. 22 train has to get running, has to. And this this is a sidebar to what I'm leading to, but he's Derrick Henry's 510 yards rushing, mm -hmm. leads oh. the leads the league by 148 yards for the rushing crown in front of Nick Chubb of the Cleveland Browns. Mm -hmm. If he does what he's been doing against them in recent history, and he let's just say he runs for two bills, he breaks off a long one, breaks off a medium one, yeah. and just gets chunk yardage here and there. And let's just say he take, breaks off two bills. He's at 7-10. He is on target, on track, to be just the fourth back in NFL history to bust 1,000 yards in the first seven games of a season. Wow. Jim Brown, O.J. Simpson twice, and Terrell Davis the year he ran for 2000 and 1998. <laughs> now, that aside, um, special teams is huge in this for them and the Titans. Mm -hmm. First of all, Jamal Agnew is the guy that the kick coverage team for the Titans had better lock down. He's got a 109-yard kick six against the Cardinals two yeah. weeks ago. He's got gets. He's a former Lion. He's a receiver slash return, and he, is, he has a knack for finding creases in the return game. Uh -huh. And then the big problem they've got is they have an open competition this week for their kicking job. Josh Lambeau has yeah. been their longtime kicker since 2017, one of the most accurate guys from 2017 to 2020, not named Justin Tucker. You're yeah, right. With, with the Baltimore Ravens. He had hip surgery in the offseason, and it has really affected his, his his kick and his psyche. 
He's missed all three field goals attempts that he's tried this year, and I think one or two PATs. So instead of cutting him or whatever, they kept him and put him to the side. They brought in uh, Matthew Wright, the former uh, Pittsburgh Steelers kicker. Uh huh. And he did the kicking duties last week, but there's a competition. They don't even know who the kicker is right now as they start the first day of practice for this week's game. They had Lambeau on the injury report as personal. You think mm-hmm. that personal is That's just what, psyche? Is, yes. I know who's on the hands team for the Jags. <laughs> well, well, well. Because <laughs> old Mike is, uh, is chilling on the line. What's wrong with you, man? Am I wrong? <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Albany City had a, a fresh song for Cuzzo Mike introducing Mike from Cleveland, <laughs> a.k.a. Larry David. Oh. Curb your enthusiasm. A.k.a. Michael Tabb. I think Deep now. Cover's now dead. <laughs> Mike Tabb's on the line. Mike, what's wow. up? Don't y'all what's up, B. You hear this way? You hear how they do me way? <laughs> Ryan. I hear I got you, sir. You, Ryan. I, I, yeah, I know you do, Rick. Yeah, like I said, you always welcome to my barbecue. You know what I'm saying? Y'all call it the cookout. It's the barbecue where I'm from. But Ryan, I got you, bro. With your, I'm gonna put you in the, I'm gonna put you out in the sun and watch you blister up. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm gonna put you're you saying he's melanin poor? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I'm melanin good, deficient. I'm, I'm, Yes, yes, very much so. I don't even, I don't know what you call that. That's straight Casper Ghost. I was a little scared for y'all. I thought y'all was pulling Halloween tricks off it. Are but, you uh, saying he's a skinnier <laughs> form of Seamus? <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, with a juice on, with, with the phone going, the silly phone. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What you got for us this morning, Cuzzo? All right, look, man, all right, I'm going to try to be quick. So, straight off the real. <laughs> I appreciate all the fans that, you know, Cousin Andrew calling in and basically telling everybody to keep their powder dry. That's really what I was calling in to say, too. We still early in the season. We got people on the benches echoing where a few of the smart fans were saying, we don't need another watch. We had Julio watch. We spent the money for Julio. Home, homeboy that came in and he done, put up, he done produced a little bit, so let's let him get healthy. Because, you know, we can talk this and we can talk that, but we got a divisional game coming up Sunday, and that's what matters. The Jets is over and done with. We can sit there and just keep on politicking and beating them down, and I like that. And also, I like that, you know, everybody beating them down because I love them when they back is against the wall. Y'all hate that take, but I absolutely love it. Now they got something to prove, so my boys going to go out there and with that chip on their shoulder, let our fan base know this stuff is not over, baby. That's really what I got to say. We still in this. That window is still wide open. It ain't halfway shut. It ain't cracked. We seeing that big, beautiful girl laying on the bed called the Super Bowl waiting on her. Oh, okay. Okay, there, Tom Watson. Tighten up and let's go. All right, All right, Big Mike. All right, so. Okay, there was a lot in that phone call, uh, some of which I will ignore. There was a lot uh, happening there. Now, I will say this, though. And Mike's got the right attitude because, look, it's never as bad as it seems. It's never as good as it seems. Yeah. And, yes, last week was bad. They still lead the division, but they have to take care of the things that are their own troubles. They got to erase mistakes. No more costly penalties. Trot out the best 48 you got, healthy or not, whatever you have, and go take care of business. Um, And and Mike's right about that part of it. He really is. Yeah. Um, Because Mike is uh, somewhere between psychotic and iconic. (laughs) Here's the other thing. I got it. Here's the other thing about Jacksonville, and I'm sure you guys have hit on it. (laughs) I'm sure you guys have hit on it on offense, but. You know, James Robinson is he's running beast. like a man yeah. on yeah. fire, and it's because he thought he was going to be second fiddle in this. Uh-huh. They drafted Travis Etienne with their second first-round pick. Respectfully. And, you know, just happens to be Trevor Lawrence's college teammate. But, uh, you know, Etienne goes down with an injury, and here's James Robinson running last – I saw him last Thursday night, and I'm like, he you know, he had 18 for 78 and two scores and running with – now oh, look, no. is he, he's not he's not the he is not the the biggest or the fastest, 
but he he runs with effort, and you have to take care he of him. He said it earlier today. He's averaging 4.9 a rush. Okay? And he, look, he, he got his first 100-yard game in the NFL against Tennessee last year in the 33-30 game. Had his first touchdown as a pro against the Tennessee Titans last year in the 33-30 to 30 game. Yeah. Had a great rookie season, and then they went out and drafted Travis Etienne. He also could have been in that photo behind Urban Meyer. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Along could've with your boy Quarterman, that's right. Quarterman, Shaq Quarterman. 100% he he correct. could have been sitting right there because what more could he have done last year for a bad team that was a sitting duck head coach and everything else that was going than what he did? Right. Yeah. It's, that's it's why amazing. it's important. You've got to bottle him up because Jacksonville's running a, a college style RPO type offense, yeah. and if you can do that, then you're going to have to force a, a trevor lawrence to roll out and do things which he's shown he can do he's yeah, he that has. dude's gotten better every week it, yeah but um and he's young enough to be able to take a hit right now interesting too. stat from pff that they just released the uh, highest graded cornerbacks in single coverage this season byron murphy of arizona is number one okay. with 88.1 percent or an 88.1 rating jaylen johnson is number three at 82.1 you know who number two is Christian Fulton, eighty-four point four. Shout out to the Christian kid. Fulton, highest graded corner, second highest graded cornerback in the NFL through four weeks in single coverage. You see, he was online too. Mo? You see me smiling. Mad Jack had quite an iconic first call yesterday. We need to pull that and play. I don't. Brad, you want to wait for this one? Right? We need. We're All gonna. Right. We're gonna do. We're gonna do this because Inky's coming up. Inky's at the coming end. on the other side. We need it. We need. We need, we bad. need Ink bad this but, week. But you're saying we're really gonna need him after Mad Jack here? Yes. He brings okay. what he brought yesterday. He's a legend. Mad right. Jack in Nashville. Mad Jack, go right ahead. Hey guys, what's shaking, bacon? <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, hey man. On this uh, Taylor the Wine thing, he missed 11 games last year, and he's already missed games this year. If he doesn't produce this year, man, he needs to go. I'm sorry. You know? Yeah. What do you think? All right. Do we think Taylor? Do we need, all right, a little this is more subtle today. Come on, man. It wasn't quite. It wasn't the fire that, that came towards the end of that call yesterday. Man, come on. The Urban Meyer thing. It's like a bad sequel. It's all right. Most so you're saying he went M80 yesterday, and he went like black cat ladyfinger, smaller yeah. firecracker. Yesterday, yesterday, exactly what yesterday it was. was Ghostbusters. Yeah. Today was Ghostbusters too. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's yeah. I get it. Yep. A hundred percent, right, Matt? <laughs> you're you're just calm, Jack. Now. <laughs> calm, Jack. <laughs> but it, look, the cautionary tale is this: we saw what happened mm -hmm. when you let a team with a winless record hang around. And you end up giving them life. That stadium got louder as it they did. got more into it. And well, the next thing you know. Our, our teammate called it out. He was like, when, when pull into the stadium. He was like, this tailgate doesn't look like an 0-3 team. Mm -hmm. They're going to support and they're going to get loud. They know when to get loud against a yep. team that's letting them. Not. Now, the difference is Jacksonville, their fan base has been losing long enough for the last <laughs> two and a half, three years. I don't know if they are used to that or whatever. But they still. If you give them life, that crowd will get behind them. And and I'm telling you, the difference this week is Trevor Lawrence is a better quarterback than Zach Wilson. And Zach Wilson's pretty doggone good and going to be good. Yeah, yeah. But there's a reason why Trevor Lawrence was pick numero uno. Uno. Coverage begins Sunday at 9 a.m. with Buck Rising. Coming up next, Stinky Johnson. Whew. We need it. We definitely need it. <laughs> it's been a rough week, Red. <laughs> we always look CG in her sleep regression. <laughs> Two forty-five every day, but one this week. Thunder I hear her start dog. coughing. Thunder scaring Margo. We got issues. You issues need a thunder that are blanket me for CG sleep. and Margo. Yeah, hey. need some serious thunder blankets uh -huh. all over the place. Our thunder blanket is Inky Johnson. He'll cover us up when we come back. It's Jay Martin and Ramon, one hundred four five, the zone. Blaine and Mickey never let. You better go out there, guns are blazing. If you are starting this league, and it doesn't matter who you go against, you better let them know that you're the real deal. You can't even crack that window, can you? You no. got to keep that window nailed shut all the time. Especially if you're an aging veteran. You know, in the NFL, you know, you get 30, all of a sudden now, you're a different player. I'm like, oh, well, can he still do it? They'll start questioning and doubting until you close the door and say, no, nah, this guy still got the goods. Blaine and Mickey, today from 1 to 3 on 104.5 The Zone.
DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, has a week five offer every football fan should jump on.
uh, doesn't have a rap sheet. <laughs> you just got, that was good. Shafe going to fight when he come back. 10.05, <laughs> no, more like 5.55. 5.55. Be one day he's going to come on, Shafer's going to be sitting in this chair. I'm not going to be here. Yeah. But I'm going to be here. Don't start asking what the body Rolling are. around in front of the mini fridge over yeah, here. Straight up. Like it's J. Martin Ramon on Twitter. You can find us there. We'll do everything again tomorrow. Scout meeting Wednesday. Uh, got derailed a little bit because of the Stephon Gilmore news. Yep. Before we get to Inky Johnson to finish us off, uh, yep. Moan, do you think Stephon Gilmore already has a destination before we're on air tomorrow? Big time. Big time. I'll say this. Most DBs, especially cornerbacks that hit the market the way they do, I never forget. We didn't know for sure, but when Joe Hayden got released by the Browns, we were all over there like, man, this is probably going to happen. Like, not saying that the front office was, was talking beforehand, but, like, you have an idea as a player. Given this opportunity to be on the open market right now, it's like, man, Joe might be here. And it's like, no, nah, he come here. It's like, how do you know? When you're that type of guy and Gilmore is that type of guy, he does what he wants to. Remember, he's not eligible something. until after week six, and he's going to have to ramp up a little bit physical activities because he hadn't played in a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not going to take very long. He got a spot. Yeah, there's no question. Wondering. Buck Rising's got a spot. It's following up this program. He will do that next. This guy's got spots all over the country. Sure. Booked up all over, but he always makes time for us on Wednesday mornings to finish this off. We appreciate that. Inky Johnson on the line. What's going on, Ink? My guys, my guys, man, it's an honor to be on. How y'all feeling? We're doing good. How did it feel watching Tennessee put up 60,000 points on Saturday? <laughs> felt great. Felt great. Hey, it was long overdue. It was. I saw Moan tweeting about it. <laughs> like, it was long overdue, man. Hey, felt good. Don't you think he went a little bit too far, though, Ink? He was kind of <laughs> – it was a little bit – like, he needs your message today because <laughs> the humility was lacking in his commentary over the weekend. <laughs> Oh, no question. But check this out. It wouldn't be Moan if he didn't take it too far. (laughs) You know me too well, Ink. You know me too well. Hey, hey, my my kids' friends don't believe I know Inky Johnson because he's that popular. But Ink knows probably the most about any of us in this room. I don't know. Not at all, man. You're my guy, man. We need you, man. Because, look, the Titans took a bad one on Sunday. Monday was bad. Yesterday wasn't that good. It's raining out. And somebody wanted to trade Tannehill for Jalen Hurts <laughs> in the middle of a season, ain't Reset us, my guy. Yeah, man, it's perfect. So I got asked a question about, like, going hard every single day, right? The difference between a cat that shows up, brings dedication, commitment, you know, sacrifice every single day, right? That's something that's challenging, but it's something that's not impossible, And so always trying to get people to press the issue on just being a better person, right? Whatever the craft is, coming in every single day trying to become better. And so I talked about the difference between what feels good and fulfillment. Because for most people, we just want what feels good, right? If we get what feels good in a moment, it solves the issue, right? Most athletes, they just want what feels good. They get their stats. They can lose a game. As long as they got what they want, it felt good. I'm great. They get their number, great. They get their pay, great. They want what feels good. Now, fulfillment is something that's totally different, right? When we're talking about what feels good every single day, that's an emotion, right? But when we talk about fulfillment, fulfillment is not contentment. And oftentimes, people think fulfillment is contentment. That's why when you distinguish the difference, I was talking to some athletes. When you talk about what feels good, right, I was talking to them about it. I said, when something feels good, right, like if you show up and, like, you get with a girl, it feels good, right? You get with her, y'all do whatever, it feels good, right? You on to the next. You get with another girl, it feels good, right? I said, but when you capture fulfillment, you're not going anywhere. When you capture fulfillment, you marry fulfillment, right? But what fulfillment is, fulfillment is something that you nurture. Fulfillment is something that drives you. Fulfillment is rooted in obligation and responsibility, And so that's why most people stay away from fulfillment and they go for what feels good because it's rooted in obligation. I'm obligated to give my best every single day when it's something that fulfills me, right? I have a responsibility with it when it's something that fulfills me. Speaking for me, traveling the country, serving for me, it's something that fulfills me. It not only feels good, it fulfills me. 
And so I'm obligated every time I get an opportunity to give my best to it. But I have a responsibility to make sure that I'm stewarding my, my gift and my craft in the right way with every environment I go into and every person's life that I come in contact with. And so make sure you're not just choosing what feels good. Make sure you're capturing fulfillment. That's my time. God bless. Peace. Hear every Titans play with Mike Keith and Coach Dave McGinnis on the call. Touchdown, Titans! Your home for Titans football. 104.5 The Zone. Buying a car can be overwhelming, especially now that the demand is back in full swing. Lucky for you, Edmonds has been taking the stress out of car shopping for over 50 years. Edmonds editors drive over a half a million miles every year, testing thousands of hours on hundreds of new vehicles. They review almost every car on the market and rank the best ones in each category. So you can narrow your search down and compare options side by side if you want to to find the best vehicle for you. When you're ready, Edmonds makes makes it easy to find the options in your area at the accurate price.